Mesut Ozil is best known as a German-born superstar soccer player and over the span of his career, he's bought up some pretty luxurious real estate, including a pair of homes in London. In 2016, Ozil completed a 10 million pound purchase of his home in North London. This was during a period when Ozil's future at Arsenal was in doubt and the purchase of this residence was seen by the media as a sign that he intended to stay in London. After acquiring the six bedroom, three story home, Mesut made a number of pretty glamorous renovations. Some of these include elegant imported marble from Turkey to decorate his living room and a sick home theater perfect for pumping out hours of FIFA. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Mesut Ozil has had a pretty lucrative career in professional soccer, garnering a net worth of $120 million and currently earns a whopping $24 million a season. Fun fact, I actually met and partied with Ozil back in 2015. 15 on a visit to LA. Nice guy. Considered one of the most creative and intelligent players in the world of football, Ozil has managed to snag a few big tickets during his career. Real Madrid paid 15 million euros for Ozil and he quickly won a starting place in the team's lineup because of an injury to Kaka. Then in 2013, Mesut joined Arsenal for a whopping 42.5 million pounds. He then signed a three year contract extension with the team in 2017 that doubled his annual base salary from 12 million dollars per year to 24 million dollars. This was enough to make him one of the 10 highest played soccer players in the world. Later on, he famously refused to accept a pay cut as an Arsenal player, a move that infuriated fans. In addition to making bank on the field, Mesut also had a few big endorsement deals under his belt. Ozil signed a seven year contract worth $35 million with Adidas for commercial boot sponsorship. In addition, he was also made the brand ambassador for Mercedes Benz in 2016. Furthermore, in addition to salary and endorsements, Ozil also owns two esports teams, one that plays FIFA in the EA Sports League and another that plays Fortnite. So when you're bringing in the kind of bread like Ozil is, you're bound to live in some pretty lavish properties. Ozil also owns over 800,000 pounds worth of automobiles, so you just know when he was building up his dream properties, he needed enormous garage for all of his whips. And let me tell you, this home has just that in addition to a number of other stunning amenities. We'll take a deep dive into Ozil's luxurious homes, including Decker that's heavily influenced by his Turkish background. Hey guys, it's Care the Vampire Slayer and I'm bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell, we post a new video daily. Today we're checking Checking out the homes of soccer superstar Mesut Ozil, including his former home in London, England, and his upgraded mansion located in the UK as well. If you enjoyed this video, we've done plenty of athlete house tours on the likes of Alex Rodriguez, Luka Doncic, and more, and we'll link to some at the end. As always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat, and now let's get into this video. Ozil's first UK spot was a breathtaking home that featured a whopping 16,300 square feet in the heart of London. The home was designed by architect Harrison Varma and featured a number of highlights, including a formal entry with soaring ceilings, spiraling staircase, and elegant chandelier overhead. The dining room featured custom fittings and fixtures, contemporary decor, and lighting, and floor to ceiling windows that gave the room an airy ambiance. Ozil's nearby living room featured a massive white sofa, cozy fireplace, and large glass sliding door with access to the backyard. His modern kitchen featured stainless appliances, marble countertops, and the usual fixings you'd find in an upscale cooking space. One noticeable thing here was definitely the bar seating. There was room for like an entire party, it seems. Then elsewhere in the house, his master bedroom featured stuff like a sitting area and private balcony access, and the minimalistic style space had a white color scheme on dark wood. It appears that Ozil likes to work hard and play hard, as his spot featured a home office complete with sleek furnishings, custom filing cabinets and bookshelves, and glass sliding door with access to outside. Looks like the perfect spot to sign some contracts or chat with his staff. One extra awesome feature was the enormous private cinema decked out with a gigantic projector screen, sleek furnishings, and a full bar that came complete with an additional flat screen TV. In addition, the movie theater featured a games room nearby complete with billiards table attached to a wine cellar. Equally impressive 
as the interior. His house featured a below ground outdoor entertaining area with flat screen TV and barbecue area with fire pit. The outside spaces were also contemporary in nature with a handful of decks and balconies extending from the mansion. Most notably, there was the indoor pool beside the outdoor lounge area, so you can feel like you're swimming half inside and half out if you open all the glass sliders. Of course, Ozil's home featured his custom underground parking garage, and seeing as how much Ozil enjoys his machines, you know he put that space to good use. Equally impressive as Ozil's first London home was his $10 million purchase of a stunning mansion in North London. The three-story mansion offers up six bedrooms plus three bathrooms and features a number of features, including decor influenced by Ozil's Turkish background. The amount of imported Turkish furniture and marble found throughout the home is pretty crazy. In fact, all of the marble in the living room was shipped in from Turkey, while the home was designed by an interior designer friend. In addition, Ozil's living room full of sleek furniture is nicely touched with by a bronze frame painting of Selim III, the reform-minded sultan of the Ottoman Empire from 1789 to 1807. One of the best spots for entertaining in the home is Ozil's basement movie theater. Once again, the athlete went all out with the cinema as it features a massive projector screen and is decked out with plush furnishings, perfect for binging live sporting events. Now, Ozil is known as a huge gamer, especially with the FIFA games, so it's also a pretty dope spot to kick back with some hardcore gaming. This area of the mansion comes complete with a built-in bar and wine cellar for ultimate relaxation. However, probably the most relaxing spot in the home is one of three bathrooms, which no doubt features a wall-mounted TV opposite the toilet. Ozil added more customizations to his current property by plastering his logo on almost every door in the place. Probably the coolest spot in the house is a room devoted to his kicks, where Ozil has eight pairs of Adidas Yeezy trainers, the highly coveted collection by Kanye West, and worth over $1,700. In addition, the room features some gold-studded Louboutin high tops worth $12,000, which are protected in a glass face wardrobe. It's safe to say that with the glass case and the home state-of-the-art security system set back on the long driveway behind iron gates, his kicks are safe and sound. While the interior is gorgeous, Ozil's backyard features a sprawling garden, colossal deck, and sleek pool decked out with cozy furnishings tucked away on the grounds. You know he couldn't skimp on the outdoor areas after looking at his former home. In addition, the pool space features a spa, barbecue area, and fire pit perfect for entertaining friends. My mom and my dad sacrificed themselves, you know, for us. I'm very happy that my mom trusted me and my dad trusted me. They let, they let me like follow my dream. Paul Pogba, who is best known as a superstar soccer player for Manchester United in the English Premier League and an integral part of the French national team, has snagged some pretty luxurious real estate in Cheshire, England and Miami. In 2017, Pogba started his real estate portfolio after he purchased a three million pound home in Cheshire, not far from the Red Devils training ground in Carrington. He scooped up the property for 600,000 pounds under the asking price and it was originally on the market for just under 3.5 million pounds. In 2020, Paul picked up a luxurious condo in Miami, housed on the six 61st floor of the 1000 Museum, the apartment sits in a towering building designed by Zaha Hadid. Many other celebrities own property in the building, including David Beckham and Victoria Beckham. The financial details of the real estate deal were never revealed, but we can assure you it's a beauty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a house tour you don't want to miss. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, so please do not show up at any private residences because it is not safe for anyone. At the age of 27, Paul Pogba has already built quite the lucrative career, garnering a net worth of $125 million and is currently earning $33 million a season. He is one of the highest paid soccer players on the planet, earning $28 million per year in base salary and $6 to $10 million per year from endorsements. As of 2020, Paul Pogba reportedly earns £290,000 per week. In 2016, he earned roughly £50 million through his Manchester United salary alone, which is roughly equivalent to $33 million per year. After four years with Juventus, Paul Pogba returned to Manchester United in 2016 where he signed a five-year contract that pays $28 million annual base salary. For me, I, did, I left because I wanted to play. I needed to get more experience, and I came back as a player who had more games in his feet and to show that, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Paul Pogba has had a sponsorship deal with Adidas for many years and often promotes Adidas products in various commercials. He is also a regular addition to the FIFA video game series published by EA. Between 2017 and 2018, Paul Pogba earned $30 million from salary and endorsements, which included $5 million purely from endorsements. That was enough to make him one of the 50 highest paid athletes on the planet. So with Pogba making bank, it was only fitting that he would pick up a few digs across the world. His first purchase was his $2.9 million home in Cheshire, with residents boasts a number of notable 
features, including an indoor swimming pool, a sauna, and an advanced media room. Then last year, he picked up a luxurious condo in Miami, which came with a number of unique and artistic common spaces in the building, including a sky lounge and a private helipad. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Marlon Palmer, and today we're bringing you yet another house tour here for you on Famous Entertainment. I noticed 95% of you guys watching are not subscribed, so please be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post new videos every day. Now, we've previously reported on the homes of Miley Cyrus and Jason Statham, so if you'd like to, please go and check those out. And if you like these videos, ring that bell for notifications. Follow me on Instagram at ThatDoomitFly and hit me up in the comment section below. Let me know whose house tour we should do next. Let's get into the video. Back in 2017, Pragma purchased a $2.9 million mansion in Cheshire for 600,000 pounds under the house's asking price. The home features five bedrooms and luxurious amenities, including an indoor swimming pool, multiple saunas, and media room. The home belongs to former soccer striker Javier Hernandez and is conveniently situated just a 20 minute drive from United's Carrington training base, which happens to be his team. The secluded security gated property in one of the Northwest's most affluent neighborhoods boasts a tailor-made kitchen, giant hedges to protect the 23 year old's privacy, of course, and a leisure suite completely complete with pool tape. There's also a balcony which soars over a double garage to house the midfielder's top of the range cars. The living room features massive lavish furnishings facing each other, a large glass sliding door which gives access to his luxe backyard, and an enormous flat screen television perfect for entertaining. The kitchen has plenty of space for entertaining and features a massive fridge unit, stainless appliances, marble countertops, and an island perfectly centered in the room. All of the bedrooms including the master suite feature wall to ceiling windows that give the room bright life and an airy and roomy ambiance. In one of the larger bedrooms, the television rises from from a cabinet perfect for catching live televised sporting events. In addition, the master suite features balcony access overlooking the grounds and a luxurious bathroom fit for one of the highest paid athletes on the planet. The bathroom features elegant tiling, marble countertops, a large soaking tub that boasts terrific countryside views, and large standing shower perfect for relaxation. One of the dining rooms feature a large dining table facing towards the back of the house in green surroundings in the leafy area of Cheshire, and it steps away from Pogba's very own massage room. A long hallway decked out in elegant paintings and modern antiques connects to an additional living area with lavish furnishings, a silver coffee table, and massive platinum decor. Probably one of the most luxurious spots in the house is Pogba's game room, which features a large billiards table, home theater system decked out with bar stools, and steps away from his wet bar for those that fancy a cocktail. In addition, Pogba has a luxurious indoor heated swimming pool with massive pillars which connect to his outdoor lounging area. In addition, the indoor swimming pool is connected to a spiraling staircase that leads to the second story and one of Pogba's elegant saunas. While that indoor pool is pretty glamorous, the backyard does not mess around. The backyard features rolling lawns, manicured grounds, and is decked out with lavish outdoor furnishings. In addition, the grounds feature an outdoor barbecue area and ample amounts of space, perfect for running around or throwing a team party. In 2020, Paul Pogba had expanded his real estate portfolio by picking up a luxurious condo in Miami, Florida. The lavish home is housed on the 61st floor of the 1000 Museum, and the apartment sits in a towering building designed by Zaha Hadid. And you know, it's pretty luxurious because many other celebs own property in the building as well, including David and Victoria Beckham. Just to put things into perspective, the two had purchased a full floor unit for $19.8 million. And we're talking some pretty next level amenities, including a sky lounge and a private helipad. While details of the French soccer star's particular unit are unavailable, marketing materials reveal the many luxe amenities the athlete will likely encounter in his new home. Each unit is outfitted with multiple oversized terraces and features an open floor plan and floor to ceiling windows in all common living areas. The terraces are each unique in shape and size, responding to the sensual curves of the tower's sculptural exoskeleton. The kitchens feature custom quartz countertops and bathrooms boast custom European cabinetry and countertops. The building offers a wide variety of common spaces such as sky lounge for dining and private events, a spa with relaxation pods and private retreatment homes, and aquatica center with an indoor lap pool on the 61st floor, a wellness center with state-of-the-art equipment, and access to a private beach club called Museum Beach. So with all those features, it kind of seems like a resort style of living for condo owners. Probably the thing you would brag about the most is that 1000 Museum also features its own helipad on the rooftop, as well as access to its own private airport, which is the only residential building in Miami to offer such a service. Quite frankly, I don't think there are many buildings in the world that offer that kind of service. But hey, when you have $125 million in the bank, you can splurge a little. No, I was uh, nine to 10 years old. Um, I saw my father crying. The man used to say, the father, man don't cry. Mm -hmm. Man don't cry. <laughs> uh, then I asked, why are you crying? I said, Brazil lost the World Cup. I don't know what to say to him. They say, say no, don't worry, don't cry. I'm going to win one World Cup for you. 
Pele, who is best known as the former superstar legend from Brazil and widely regarded as the best soccer player of all time, has snagged some pretty luxurious real estate in the East Hamptons and in Brazil. In 2018, it was reported that Pele had sold his home in the Hamptons for $2.8 million. He had previously purchased the residence for $156,000 in 1979. Over the years, Pele expanded the home into a lavish, extensive 3,500 square foot estate. Beach access is another major plus. Pele wasn't exactly making the use of the house at age 77 as he had long since retired in his home nation of Brazil. So essentially after holding on to the home for almost 40 years, he managed to make $2.7 million profit off of it. Not too shabby. In addition, he owns property in Brazil where he even has a museum dedicated to him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a house tour you do not want to miss. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, so please do not show up at any private residences because it is not safe for anyone. The retired soccer legend had quite the lucrative career playing professional soccer, garnering a net worth of $100 million. Now this number may not add up to current athlete's net worth, but keep in mind, Pele is pushing 80 years old. At his peak, he was the highest paid athlete on the planet. Just to put into perspective how good Pele was, consider this. Pele's career began with Santos FC after impressing the coach with his incredible skills at the age of 15 years old. He then signed a contract in 1956 and made his professional debut that year, scoring during his first match. By age 16, he would already be the top scorer in the entire Brazilian league. He was quickly called into action for the Brazilian national team, playing at the 1958 and 62 World Cups, in addition to being a national hero for the Brazilian national football team. After retiring, Pele became a worldwide ambassador for football and a political activist who strove to improve conditions for the poverty stricken in Brazil. In 1992, he was appointed as a UN ambassador for ecology and the environment, and in 1994, he was made a UNESCO goodwill ambassador. While Pele was making bank from professional soccer, he was also active in endorsement deals. In fact, in 2000. 16, Pele sued Samsung Electronics for $30 million, claiming damages for false endorsements and the violation of his right of publicity. The claim arose because of a 2015 Samsung ad that featured a man that looks almost exactly like Pele, and another scene featuring the player's signature bicycle kick. While Pele was making bank, he managed to build quite the real estate portfolio, snagging an East Hamptons beachfront home nearly 40 years ago for $120,000. Now fast forward 40 years later, he sold the property for $2.8 million so that he could return to his home country of Brazil. When you look at the nearly $2.7 million dollar property made on the house, you realize Pele knows how to kill it playing soccer and the real estate game. This is just real estate 101. If you snag a nice dig, hold on to it for as long as you can. Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Marlon Palmer and today we're bringing you another house tour here for you on Famous Entertainment. I noticed 95% of you guys are watching and sub not subscribed. Like, you guys need to subscribe if you're watching. We post new videos daily, so please do so. We were previously reported on the homes of LeBron James and Drake, so if you'd like to, please check those videos out. If you like these videos, please ring that bell for notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Dad McFly and hit us up in the comment section down below and let us know whose house tour to do next. Let's get into the video. I come to my house. I say, Father, you know, my friends, they say I was selected for the, the national team. I said, yeah, they have it. You no, know, they're going to take five young players. You going to be one. I say, Father, but Sweden, I don't, I don't speak Sweden. I said, Shut up. You don't need to speak soon. <laughs> Back in 1979, while Pele was living in America, he made a $156,000 purchase on an East Hampton beach house. After a series of expansions over the years, the home featured two stories, 3,400 square feet, and boasted seven bedrooms, five bathrooms, and it sold for only $2.8 million after originally listing it for 3.2. Probably the most luxurious feature of the house is its location, as it's located on a landscape acre next to Clearwater Beach and Marina, and access to the beach. When talking about luxurious amenities, this home does not disappoint. Point, as the interior includes extra high ceilings, an open floor plan, and a brand new kitchen to go with play area, office, and even a media room. In addition, the home comes complete with an outdoor pool, outside shower, and garage. Upon entry, guests lucky enough to visit enter through a long gated driveway to an airy beach house that features endless floor to ceiling windows that boast terrific water views. Located throughout the home, these oversized windows give the rooms life and an area and roomy ambiance. A living space features a balcony on the second story, overlooking the room, decked out with lavish furnishings, an elegant chandelier hanging from the ceiling, one of the kitchens that boasts an island, perfectly centered and spectacular marina views. The double height living room and open dining room area are perfect for casual 
and entertaining with those views in every direction. The particular living space features a sliding glass door, which gives access to the terrace, outdoor pool, and beach property. The kitchen features an abundance of custom built-ins, hardwood flooring, stainless appliances, marble countertops, and an additional island perfectly centered in the room. If desired, steps away from the kitchen features access to a large dining room. The dining room is decked out with lavish furnishing, steps away from the oversized table, elegant artwork, and a chandelier soaring from the ceiling. On the main floor, windows and sliding doors open onto a wraparound deck, leading to a waterside pool and outdoor shower. But we'll get to the exterior in a minute. The house features a master suite on each of its two floors and both have sliding doors opening onto the deck. Each of the master suites feature access to an elegant bathroom decked out with sophisticated tiling, a large soaking tongue with, you guess it, more spectacular views, and a large standing shower perfect for relaxation. In addition, the suites feature walk-in closets big enough to pose as a room in the house, custom drawers and furnishings, large flat screen televisions, and a grand balcony overlooking the grounds. A lower level den and office media room adds more space to relax as it features large cozy furnishings, a flat screen television, perfect for binging live televised sporting events, ping pong table, and a wet bar for those that fancy a cocktail. In addition, the home features a detached garage for all of Pele's whips that boasts ample room for storage. With numerous glass sliding doors, the porch and terrace lead to a massive in-ground pool with access to a glamorous outdoor shower. Steps away from the pool and shower, the property features an abundance of lavish furnishings, beach views, and an outdoor barbecue area. This backyard features the utmost relaxation and tranquility, and we're willing to bet Pele has thrown a few parties here. While Pele's home in East Hamptons is quite renowned, there's not a lot of information on his home back in Brazil. However, the massive estate, which resembles a submarine, features a two story gated property. The second story features a balcony that overlooks the grounds and a first story lounging area decked out in lavish furnishings. Aerial shots show that the home features luxe amenities including a circular motor court, ample amounts of private grounds, large pool with waterfall and tennis court. In addition, the home is located on a massive property decked out with rolling lawns and manicured grounds. The home is also located not too far from the Pele Museum, which cost $22.7 million to build over six years. The museum showcases trophies and championships which dedicate to Pele for all the achievements and success he had built over career playing football. ¿Cuál es tu restaurante favorito en Brasil? Uh, en Brasil... La comida de mi madre la mejor. Ronaldinho, who is best known as the former Brazilian-born superstar soccer player, has managed to snag some pretty luxurious real estate throughout the world. His most notable properties are located in Greece, Barcelona, Florida, Brazil, Paris, and Lake Como in Italy. During the 2014 World Cup, Ronaldinho had listed his luxurious Rio de Janeiro mansion for a whopping $15,000 a night. The five-bedroom, six-bathroom house also has a home theater, an outdoor pagoda, a yoga room, hammocks in the bedroom, rooms and TVs in the bathroom. Most recently, Ronaldinho had spent five months in a Paraguay prison and upon being granted house arrest, he spent his time under house arrest at a luxurious Palmaroga hotel in Paraguay. And apparently, he had been accused of hosting parties attended by groups of models during his house arrest. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a house tour that you do not want to miss. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though we've done house tours of our own, please do not show up at any private residences because it is not safe for anybody. The very controversial Ronaldinho has quite the lucrative career killing it in professional soccer, garnering a net worth of $90 million. Ronaldinho's income took a huge jump after the 2003-2004 season, after being transferred from Paris Saint-Germain to Barcelona, where he earned $10 million per season. In 2006, the same year he won the Golden Ball, Ronaldinho earned $20 million from endorsements alone. His total earnings in 2006 were $26 million. He was a longtime endorser of Coca-Cola, but lost his sponsorship in 2014 after he was spotted drinking a Pepsi. The loss cost him $700,000 per year. He also has endorsement brands with Nike, EA, and more than a dozen other smaller brands, including mobile phone companies and energy drinks. He appeared on the cover of EA's FIFA Football five times. He has more than 50 million followers on Instagram alone, more than 100 million of all channels combined, and reportedly charges $250,000 for a single post or personal appearance. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clyde Smith, and today we're bringing you another house tour right here on Famous Entertainment. Now, I did notice about 95% of you watching aren't subscribed, so please be sure to hit that subscribe button because we do post a new video daily. If you like these videos, ring that bell for notifications, follow me on the gram, and as per usual, let me know whose house tour is next down in those comments below. All right, let's get into this video. Perhaps one of the most glamorous scenes you'll ever see in a house tour, Ronaldinho owned a luxurious estate overlooking the beach in Spain, located in Castel de Feliz. I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. We even talked about it for a long time. 
The showstopper of this home is the spacious living room that boasts a large retractable wall, opening up to a lavish pool facility. The pool area features a profusion of quality furnishings, a bar, barbecue area, kitchen, fire pit, jacuzzi, sauna, and outdoor entertainment system, perfect for entertaining. Easily, the most stunning part of the pool is that it faces directly to the Mediterranean Sea. Hey, Ronaldinho, can I uh, get an invite to this pool party? Another lavish property Ronaldinho has owned was a mansion located in Bougival, a small town located 10 miles from the center of Paris, France. This luxurious house has an area of 10,800 square feet and is equipped with a sauna facility, as well as a large indoor swimming pool. In addition, the indoor pool comes complete with a profusion of lavish furnishings, jacuzzi, and a his and hers change room. Just take a look at that oceanfront property, decked out with a beach, the most lavish furnishings, outdoor kitchen, and dual fireplaces. You'll be happy to know that the outdoor patio and terrace features a bar for those that fancy a cocktail. The stunning estate was purchased by Ronaldinho for a whopping $16.5 million. During the 2014 World Cup in Rio de Janeiro, Ronaldinho had listed his luxurious mansion on Airbnb for $15,000 a night. So what does 15 grand a night get you? Well, first and foremost, the home is located in the district of Barra to Dajuca. Barra da... Barra to do The mansion is built to a quality building standard with an area of up to 10,000 square feet and boasts five bedrooms and six bathrooms. Now, if we're talking about the goodies, the home features a number of luxe amenities, including pool facilities with a jacuzzi, barbecue area, bar, kitchen, fire pit, and outdoor entertainment system. As impressive as that pool facility is, the interior of the home is equally impressive and features a home theater decked out with a large projector screen and leather furnishings, perfect for binge watching televised sports events. In addition, the home theater features yet another bar for those that get thirsty. In addition, the home features a cozy fireplace and office where we're willing to bet that Ronaldinho signed an endorsement deal in his day. Probably the most interesting features in the interior is the yoga room, hammocks in the bedrooms, and TVs in the bathrooms. In addition, there's also an abundance of Ronaldinho-themed artwork throughout the home. Ronaldinho recently made headlines for all the wrong reasons. In July 2019, Ronaldinho's Spanish and Brazilian passports were confiscated by the authorities over unpaid taxes. In March 2020, Ronaldinho was detained by police in Paraguay for possessing a fake Paraguayan passport. After facing five months in prison, Ronaldinho was placed under house arrest and stayed at the luxurious Palmagora Hotel in Asuncion, Paraguay. And it appears that only the best places in the city will do for Ronaldinho. Staying at the hotel's presidential suite, the unit featured its own balcony, 55-inch smart TV, as well as a whirlpool bath and spacious kitchenette. Ronaldinho also received five-star room service, while his brother was believed to be in the executive suite, which is located two doors down from the presidential suite. In addition, all units are equipped with air conditioning, additional flat-screen televisions with cable channels, a kettle, an ensuite bathroom with soaking tub and shower, a hair dryer, and a desk. In addition, every room comes with a wardrobe and private bathroom. The hotel's luxuries do not end there, however, as the glamorous amenities include a stunning rooftop with a beautiful swimming pool. In addition, the rooftop pool comes complete with a bar and serves vintage cocktails for guests. In addition, the hotel provides accommodations to yet another outdoor swimming pool and fitness center. If that doesn't do the trick, the hotel also features a sun terrace and stunning city views in every unit. You'll be happy to know that a continental breakfast is available daily at the Palmaro Hotel. Even after being under house arrest, Ronaldinho yet again had made headlines after he had been accused of hosting parties attended by groups of models while under house arrest at a luxury hotel in Paraguay. Eyewitnesses had spotted Ronaldinho and his brother welcoming several women in in one go to their rooms until the early hours breaching both terms of their release and nighttime curfews imposed by the Paraguayan authorities due to coronavirus. I don't know, it just sounds like somebody snitching on our boy Ronaldinho. One source claimed to even see two women at a time coming to visit them, some of them famous, carrying presidents, and high quality beverages. I'ma say it again, it just sounds like somebody snitching on our boy Ronaldinho. And apparently they would party from midnight to 5 a.m. dancing and singing karaoke. It appears Ronaldinho was having a blast being under house arrest. The land of Poland, despite being based out of Germany. Lewandowski built a stunning summer residence in Stanislava, a quiet village in the northeast corner of Poland, which is the homeland of his wife Anna. The summer retreat features lakefront property, a private dock, and tons of discreet property perfect for relaxation. Back in 2016, Robert splashed out $7 million on a deluxe pad 
in his home city of Warsaw. The lavish apartment comes complete with a number of luxe features, including his very own golf simulator. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a house tour that you do not want to miss. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though we've done house tours of our own, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anybody. Robert Lewandowski had quite the lucrative career, killing it in professional football, garnering a net worth of $85 million, and currently earns $24 million a season. In 2020, he earned $30 million and was one of the highest paid soccer players on the planet. With his base salary of $24 million, the remainder comes from endorsements. Like any of the other superstar football players, he has endorsed brands like Nike, Opal, EA Sports in the past, and currently endorses CoverGirl and a sports drink named Oshi. In addition, he also recently signed a lucrative deal with Gillette. Being a legend in his native land of Poland, Robert was featured on the cover of the Polish edition of EA Sports' FIFA 15 video game. Robert's famous X goal celebration, arms crossed, and index fingers pointing up also appears in FIFA 18. While making bank and earning both lucrative salary and endorsement deals, it's reported that the total estimated value of his homes and properties is approximately 17 million. In addition to splashing out millions on lavish real estate, Robert owns many luxury car brands such as Maserati, Aston Martin, Audi, and Ferrari, all of which are estimated to be worth around $9 million. In addition to owning stunning properties and luxury cars, Robert also invests primarily in startups, e-commerce, and websites, mainly through a Protons Venture Capital, a company of which he is a shareholder. Lewandowski also owns Store9, an agency specializing in marketing communications. So needless to say, he has a pretty impressive investment history too. We will take a deep dive into the lavish properties that Lewandowski owns. What's going on guys, it's Clyde Smith, and today we're bringing you another house tour right here on Famous Entertainment. Now I did notice about 95% of you watching aren't subscribed, so please be sure to hit that subscribe button because we do post a new video daily. If you do like these videos, ring that bell for notifications, follow me on the gram, and as per usual, let me know whose house tour is next in those comments down below. All right, let's get into this video. Despite spending the bulk of his career playing football in Germany, Lewandowski is clearly a proud Polish man, as the bulk of his real estate is in his homeland. Not much is known about the summer retreat in Stanislaw, Poland, but we did do a bit of digging and managed to find some photos and some info. What we know is that his summer retreat resides in a quiet village in the northeast corner of Poland, where his wife Anna is from, and the massive wooden home has been known to be the spot for him and his family to stay during summer vacations and Christmas holidays. Taking a look at some photos, the massive cottage features a lakefront property, a private dock, and tons of discreet property, perfect for relaxation. It appears that the home features a number of luxe features, including a professional sized tennis court, guest house for those lucky enough to visit, and a gazebo included into the outdoor entertainment area. In addition, we found out that the outdoor entertainment area features a jacuzzi, barbecue area, fire pit, and outdoor entertainment system, perfect for entertaining your guests. Furthermore, the stunning backyard comes complete with rolling lawns, manicured grounds, and gardens with ample space to venture around or even practice those football skills. While it does doesn't look like there is a pool on the grounds, life just couldn't get much better with the lake just steps away from the estate. Furthermore, the stunning backyard comes complete with rolling lawns, manicured grounds, and gardens with ample space to venture around or even practice those footy skills. Back in 2016, Lewandowski splashed out $7 million for a deluxe pad in the Zolata 44 tower in his hometown of Warsaw. Standard flats in the Zolata 44 tower block typically range between $240,000 to 2 million euros, but when you're racking in the kind of bread that Robert is, you can go for the highest price homes at $7 million. The home was designed by Polish-American architect Daniel Lubinsky, who designed the 192 meter tall block. And remember to include a number of luxe features, including a private cinema, golf simulator, and wine tasting room. Guests lucky enough to visit are greeted to a formal entry decked out with modern decor and leads to a spacious living room. The living space features a number of lavish furnishings, custom fittings, and fixtures, cozy fireplaces, and large flat screen television, perfect for binge watching live sporting events. In addition, in addition, the living space comes complete with floor-to-ceiling windows, boasting stunning city views. The dining area features modern decor, including contemporary artwork, a telescope, colossal grand piano, custom cabinetry, and a wet bar perfect for entertaining. There's not a spot in the house where you cannot find lavish furnishings, including massage chairs that lie beside the private balcony. Talk about luxury. Now, when you're killing it on the field like Lewandowski, you need to have a dazzling kitchen for those post-game meals, and you'll be happy to know that the Zolata 44 has got his back. Robert's kitchen features stainless steel appliances, 
appliances, marble countertops, and an island perfectly centered in the room. In addition, the kitchen features a breakfast nook with more stunning views and a walk-in pantry with more room than you know what to do with. Lewandowski's master bedroom proves to be fit for a king, as it features floor-to-ceiling windows, a sitting area, additional fireplace, and large flat screen, perfect for relaxation. In addition, the master bedroom comes complete with a walk-in closet, big enough to pose as an additional room in the house. Lewandowski's master ensuite features dual sinks, a large soaking tub that boasts spectacular views, and a large standing shower, perfect for relaxation. As impressive as Lewandowski's deluxe pad is, the Zalata 44 also features some of the most lavish features. The eighth floor of the building provides to its residents over 1,400 square meters of recreational and business area that includes the sports and recreation center, which Lewandowski claims allows him to compete his training program at the highest quality possible. In addition, the building's amenities include a 25 meter swimming pool, gym, sauna, massage rooms, as well as an additional private cinema. Furthermore, the building boasts an outdoor jacuzzi and spacious terrace with stunning city views. There's also an additional wine cellar and two conference rooms available for the residents. The building is conveniently located in central Warsaw and features panoramic windows, which grant breathtaking views from the unit's windows. Now onto the goodies. Robert's Dig features a personal home golf simulator decked out with lavish leather furnishing. In addition, the home comes complete with a private home theater that boasts a large projector screen, more lavish furnishings, and a wine cellar, as well as a tasting room. Perhaps Lewandowski is a bit of a wine connoisseur, as the room can hold up to 300 bottles. We're willing to bet that Lewandowski threw a few team parties in this is a special night for me and a spe special moment in my career uh, and nothing I have to, uh, this is the day to enjoy. Luka Modric, who is best known as the superstar professional soccer player for Real Madrid and captains the Croatian national team, has managed to snag some pretty luxurious real estate, including a pair of luxurious homes in Madrid, Spain, and a villa in his home nation of Dubrovic, Croatia. Luka's recent purchase includes a brand new 12 million euros home in La Morreja, an elite district in the Spanish capital. The house features a whopping nine bathrooms and a cinema in the basement. While the Dubrovnik villa was purchased for 15 million euros and features a panoramic Terrace overlooking the old city of Dubrovnik and the Adriatic Sea. We will take a quick look at Luca's childhood home, plus these two other stunners. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a house tour that you do not want to miss. Now, in these videos, we don't reveal any real addresses, and even though we've done house tours of our own, please do not show up at any private residences because it is not safe for anybody. Luca had quite the lucrative career, killing it in professional soccer, garnering a net worth of $75 million. The veteran midfielder's salary and earnings are well deserved, as analysts generally see Luca as one of the best midfielders of all time, and he is widely recognized as the greatest Croatian player to ever strap on a pair of soccer cleats. Luca has earned a number of notable transfer deals over the course of his career. Career. Moving to Tottenham Hotspur for the Premier League in 2008 for a then record transfer fee of 26.0 million dollars or 16.5 million euros before moving to Real Madrid in La Liga in 2012 for a transfer fee of 39.3 million dollars or 30 million euros. In addition, Luca also has lucrative endorsement deals with brands like Nike, Russell Brown, and Max TV. What's perhaps most impressive is that Luca has managed to have such a successful career despite having a very traumatic childhood. Luca was initially raised in a stone house owned by his grandmother and passed the time by shepherding goats as a five-year-old. In 1991, his life was forever changed by the Croatian War of Independence. His family was forced to flee, but not before Luka's grandfather was lined up and shot by Serb rebels. His family home was then burned to the ground, but luckily Luka's family was already gone. Over the next few years, Luka's family lived as refugees, staying in hotels while his father joined the Croatian army as an aero mechanic. Luka played football for the first time in the city of Zadar, while thousands of bombs fell around him on a daily basis. Football was a means of escape for the young boy. Eventually, Luca's potential became clear. The family scraped together what little money they had and funded his soccer training at a sports academy. And the rest was history. We even managed to get footage of Luca's childhood home. What's going on guys? It's Clyde Smith and today we're bringing you another house tour right here on Famous Entertainment. Now I did notice about 95% of you watching aren't subscribed. So please be sure to hit that subscribe button because we do post a new video daily. If you like these videos, please ring that bell for notifications follow me on the gram, and as per usual, let me know whose house tours is next in those comments down below. All right, let's get into this video. This recognition that I'm receiving uh, every day for me is something uh, really special and I am thankful uh, to everyone who is uh, there behind me always, who is supporting me, and uh, yeah, thankful.
Luka Modric had lived in the village of Madrici until the age of six in 1991. Luka's family fled to the nearby town of Zadar after their home was destroyed by Serb rebels during the Croatian War of Independence. After a Croatian filmmaker had visited Luka, he had befriended a man named Stipe Modric and his family who lived in the foothills. That man turned out to be Luka's father. In the documentary, Luka is seen in an oversized jacket, moving goats alongside with the threat of a stick, not to mention protecting the family goats from wolves. Back in March of 2019, Luka splashed out 15 million euros for an absolutely stunning villa that features a panoramic terrace overlooking the old city of Dubrovnik and the Archaic Sea. However, the purchase wasn't as straightforward as Luka was hoping it to be. Located in the elite suburb of St. Jacobs, the spacious villa and gardens sit directly next to a public park, and the city of Dubrovnik is apparently suing the owners as in a renovation for the villa, they claim that the owners took part of the park. However, patience is a virtue, and luckily Luca held out and managed to snag this luxury villa. Some of the luxe features in this villa are absolutely stunning. The home features a beautiful kitchen with stainless steel appliances, marble countertops, and an island perfectly centered in the room. The dining and living spaces come decked out with sleek furnishings, custom fittings and fixtures, a cozy fireplace, an elongated chandelier, crystal piano, and a flat screen television, perfect for relaxation. Luca clearly likes to work hard and play hard as the home features its own personal gym with tanning bed and a colossal wine cellar for those that fancy a nice Chardonnay. As glamorous as the interior of this home is, the exterior is the selling point of this villa. The villa features a two-story setup with an enormous terrace sporting views on top of a gorgeous infinity pool decked out with topical greenery and statues on the bottom. Steps from the stunning pool are a cobblestone path that leads to an enchanting gazebo that overlooks the archaic sea. Luca keeps a low profile, so not much was known when he moved to Madrid in 2012. Luca moved to La Moleja, where many of his teammates already lived. However, he recently moved into a new house in the same area, and apparently this place was just too dope not to make headlines. The new and improved dig costs Luca around 12 million and features 10,000 square meters, with 2,700 of those being for the house, while the home boasts nine bedrooms and nine bathrooms. The majority of the house is lived on one floor with a kitchen, a bathroom, and six bedrooms, along with a massive living room. Luca keeps the theme of beautiful kitchen that features stainless steel appliances, marble countertops, and an island perfectly centered in the room. In addition, the kitchen comes complete with a breakfast nook and a butler's pantry with more room than you know what to do with, while the living room features an abundance of lavish furnishings, sleek fireplace, and a wet bar perfect for relaxation. The master suite features a sitting area, cozy fireplace, and a private balcony access with spectacular views. In addition, the master suite features a walk-in closet big enough to pose as an additional room in the house, while the ensuite bathroom features dual sinks, a large soaking tub that boasts views of the grounds and a large standing shower perfect for unwinding. The second floor is where visitors lucky enough to visit will stay with an incredible view to the garden. Some of the luxe features include a spectacular cinema with 18 seats, a games area, and an additional bar. In addition, Luca kept the wine connoisseur theme going by upgrading to a massive all-glass wine cellar. For Luca's family, he had a custom-built 80 meters kids room that features swings, a television, and a climbing wall. In addition, Luca's villa features another room for massages, a modern gym with his and hers change rooms, a jacuzzi, and a steam room. The estate also features a garage that can fit 10 cars and also has a separate apartment with two rooms, a bathroom, and a living room. Luca keeps his beautiful exterior game strong with a huge garden, swimming pool, and both paddle courts, and a CrossFit circuit. The backyard is nicely touched with lavish furnishings, barbecue, fire pit, and kitchenette. So Luca, am I getting an invite to this pool party? Okay, so I think I'll bring this house tour to an end right here. We got to take a quick look at Luca Modric's homes, and after seeing all these homes that he snagged, what did you think? Was that everything that you'd expect out of Luca? I mean, personally, I'm torn between his last two homes. How do you choose between a villa overlooking the sea and then an 18-seat home theater? I don't know, just seems like a hard decision. Kylian Mappe, who is best known as a superstar professional soccer player for Paris Saint-Germain of League One, has managed to snag some pretty luxurious real estate, including a prestigious penthouse in the heart of Paris. Prior to becoming a soccer prodigy, Mappe had lived in the projects of Bondi Paris. The area is full of high-rise social housing and is generally regarded as one of the most unsafe places in Paris. After becoming one of the highest paid soccer players in the entire world, Mafé treated himself to an exceptional 600 meters squared penthouse with stunning views of the Eiffel Tower and its exclusive neighborhoods. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a house tour that you do not want to miss. In these videos, we don't reveal any real addresses and even though we've done house tours of our own, please do not show up at any private residences because it is not safe for anybody. Killian Mappe has already had quite the lucrative career, killing in professional soccer, garnering a net worth of $95 million and currently earns $28 million a year. 
Mape is already one of the highest paid soccer players on the planet, including his $28 million salary that he racked up $14 million worth of endorsements for a total of $42 million. Nike has been the official sports equipment supplier for Mape ever since his breakthrough into senior football. Nike last extended his contract in July 2017 in a long-term contract that also saw the youngster launch his own personalized boots, all at the age of 18. Mape became the cover star for EA Sports' latest installment of FIFA, making him the youngest footballer to appear solely on the cover of any FIFA game. In addition, the Geneva-based luxury watchmaker Hublot signed Mape in a deal reportedly worth $1 million per year. Mape replaced Usain Bolt as the brand's lead ambassador. His salary and endorsements are well earned. In 2017, he signed for league rivals Paris Saint-Germain on an initial loan, which was made permanent in 2018. A transfer worth about $180 million, making him both the second most expensive player and most expensive teenager. To put this all into perspective, at 19 years of age, he earned about $24 million between salary and endorsements in just one year. I mean, the guy's got cake. Killian is the youngest French player to score a goal in the World Cup and the second youngest player overall to score a goal in the World Cup final at the 2018 Games. In addition to winning the 2018 FIFA World Cup, he was named the FIFA World Cup Best Young Player. Killian famously donated his entire $500,000 World Cup bonus to a charity that supports disabled children, which was probably because of his humble beginnings. So needless to say, Mape is considered one of the best players in the world and could be the future of the sport. What's going on guys, it's Clyde Smith, and today we're bringing you another house tour right here on Famous Entertainment. Now I did notice about 95% of you watching aren't subscribed, so please be sure to hit that subscribe button because we do post a new video daily. Now if you do like these videos, please ring the bell for the notifications, follow me on the gram, and as per usual, let me know whose house tour is next in those comments down below. All right, let's get into this video. La première étape de, de Kylian, ma première étape, c'est Bondi. Donc je pense que c'était un bon rappel et un signe de reconnaissance aussi parce que j'ai passé une majeure partie de ma vie là-bas. Je me suis construit là-bas et je pense que c'est un, un bon clin d'œil. J'ai fait 10 ans, hein. je n'ai pas, pas, pas été de passage. J'ai vraiment grandi, j'ai créé mon style. J'ai grandi en tant qu'enfant, ado. Donc j'ai vraiment un, une attache profonde à, à cette ville, à ce club. Donc pour moi, c'était vraiment euh, important pour moi de rendre hommage. While Kylian Mbappé today is known as a soccer prodigy and likely will never have to worry about money ever again, he grew up in one of the poorest and most dangerous neighborhoods known as Bondi, a northeastern suburb of Paris. Mbappé grew up in the Bondi projects at the residence Suzanne Bouzon, which is a public housing complex forming a sub-district within the La Nou Caliette district, located north of Bondi. It was built in 1961 and brings together 253 apartments, distributed across four five-story bars and two-story bar. Around the avenue of the same name, it borders the neighborhood market, as well as the Church of Risen Christ. In 2009, the HLM complex was residentialized as part of the urban renewal carried out by the city of Bondi in collaboration with ANRU and the social landlord Bondi Habitat. Building C occupies numbers 17 to 27 of Avenue Suzanne Busson. It is one of three bars consolidating phase one of its residential complex. It has 72 apartments spread over five floors. The average price of the units are 2,607 euros per month and range anywhere from between 1,967 to 3,565 per month, which is nearly half of the average cost of rent in Paris. What's unique about Mape growing up in the projects is that while the vast sprawl of suburbs and satellite towns around Paris is depicted as a breeding ground for crime and terrorism, it's home to the greatest pool of soccer talent in all of Europe. The town has since honored Mape with a giant mural of the star striker that overlooks the road from Bondi where he grew up to Paris with the caption Ville de Possibel. It reads, translated to the city of possibilities. After becoming the second highest paid soccer player in the entire world, Mape snagged a top floor luxurious penthouse located on the 16th borough of Paris with stunning view of the Eiffel Tower and its cheek neighborhoods. In addition, this duplex offers a breathtaking view of Champ de Mars and everything for which Paris is famous for. The home is located on a quiet street that must have spoken to Mape as it is located a little further from his training place. The penthouse features 600 square meters and boasts five bedrooms 
bedrooms plus two suites. The dazzling home is estimated to cost 3.5 million euros or 3,500 euros per month and features a number of luxe features, including a massive roof terrace through three floors with a bar and jacuzzi. In addition, the luxe home is decked out with rare paintings and traditional decorations, adding a touch of class. To top it off, the old beams give this house an old style, typical of the French capital. One of the selling points of this home is the number of oversized windows that give tons of bright light and panoramic views from virtually every room in the house. The home features a number of dining and living room spaces, decked out with lavish furnishings, custom fittings and fixtures, a cozy fireplace and large flat screen television, as well as an elegant chandelier soaring above. In addition, one of two living spaces feature a wet bar for those that fancy a Chardonnay, which adds a splash of sophistication with the traditional decor and unique paintings. The open kitchen features stainless steel appliances, marble countertops, and an island perfectly centered in the room. In addition, the kitchen features a breakfast nook and a butler's pantry with more room than you know what to do with. With five bedrooms and two master suites to choose from, the master bedrooms feature a sitting area, private balcony access, and sleek fireplace. In addition, the master suite features a walk-in closet big enough to pose as an additional room in the house. The ensuite bathroom offers a spa-like experience with dual sinks and a large soaking tub that is perfect for relaxation. Mape clearly knows how to work and play hard as the dig features a library and home office stacked with bookshelves, potted plants, cozy fireplace, and a cheek chandelier soaring above. We're willing to bet that he signed an endorsement deal or two in there. As beautiful as the interior of the home is, the outdoor patio and the terrace is truly the showstopper in this house tour. The spacious balcony features an abundance of lavish furnishings, a number of dining spaces to enjoy a meal with a view, and is nicely touched with large pillars and an awe-inspiring panoramic view of Paris. I mean, if the view doesn't cut it for you, guests lucky enough to visit can relax in the jacuzzi or grab a drink at the bar. When I was still playing part-time, uh, it was my pride and joy as well. Renault Clio, blue, best car of my life. Went down to my local. The landlord said I can get it yeah, MOT'd for free. Jamie Vardy, who is best known as a superstar professional soccer player for Leicester of the English Premier League, has managed to snag some pretty luxurious real estate, including homes in Melton Mowbray and Lincolnshire. The former home's property was recently sold for $1.25 million in 2017, despite refurbishing it because everyone found out where Vardy had lived. He decided to sell the house to have more privacy for his family. Therefore, the family had to relocate to a more discreet location in Lincolnshire. It has been reported that Jamie and his wife Rebecca Vardy want to build a two-story extension containing four bedrooms at their Lincolnshire mansion. An extension that would see the total number of bedrooms in the home increasing to 12. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a house tour that you want to miss. In these videos, we don't reveal any real addresses, and even though we've done house tours of our own, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anybody. Jamie Vardy has already had quite the lucrative career, killing it professional soccer, garnering a net worth of $12 million. In addition, Jamie has had a number of lucrative endorsement deals with the likes of Nike and Beats by Dre. A late bloomer during his football career, Vardy has become regarded as one of the most prolific strikers in the world of football. While the road to success wasn't always easy for Jamie before turning professional, Vardy combined playing non-league football with a job as a technician making medical splints. I know, odd pairing. In 2007, he received a conviction for an assault following an incident outside of a pub, and he had to play with an electronic tag fitted for six months, while his curfew also limited his playing time at Stocksbridge Park Steels. Vardy drank heavily every night during his early days at the club and would turn up at a training facility still intoxicated. Lester Chairman discussed with Vardy over what he expected in his life, and Vardy gave up drinking and took training way more seriously from then on. Vardy refocused after the earlier nightclub assault incident and with the arrival of his first daughter Ella, Vardy pulled a full 180. In 2016, Vardy was voted the Premier League Player of the Season and FWA Footballer of the Year. As underdogs, Leicester won the title. He later went on to win the Premier League Golden Boot for the 2019-20 season, becoming the oldest player to win the award. How does Vardy continue to be dominant at 34 years of age? Well, apparently he does not exercise in a gym and that he consumes Red Bull caffeinated beverages and snooze smokeless tobacco. Whatever does the trick, we will take a deep dive into the luxurious mansion of Jamie Vardy and future plans with the estate. What's going on guys, it's Clyde Smith and today we're bringing you yet another house tour right here on Famous Entertainment. Now I did notice about 95% of you watching aren't subscribed, so please be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post a new video daily. And if you do like these videos, please ring the bell for notifications, follow me on the gram, and as per usual, let me know whose house tour is next down in those comments below. All right, let's get into this video.
Jamie Vardy's rise from non-league footballer who worked in a factory to then become a Premier League title winner, a record breaker, and an England international is nothing short of spectacular. And so was his former mansion. Designed and built way back in 1968, the sprawling 5,900 square foot mansion is sprawled over three floors and features an impressive eight bedrooms. The core of the house is its large open plan kitchen, with its four ovens decked out with stainless steel appliances, marble countertops, and an island perfectly centered in the room. The open plan kitchen leads to a dining room that comes complete with custom fittings and fixtures, oversized windows, and an elegant chandelier soaring above. The house has been upgraded with a high-tech smart home system that will enable its new owners to control lighting, sound, heating, all from their iPhone. As part of the refurbishment, Jamie and Becky Vardy turned one of the downstairs rooms into a games room, complete with a billiards table and a bar, perhaps to entertain Jamie's teammates when they come over to party. The mansion became somewhat of a party house over the past couple of years, hosting engaged housewarming, and birthday parties, as well as a big party to celebrate Leicester City winning their first ever Premier League title. The couple added a custom-made curved staircase with an elegant runner which complemented the exposed brickwork in the reception hall. Atop of the stairs was the dazzling master suite, which occupies the entire second floor. The third floor features the remaining seven bedrooms, including two with en-suites. The en-suite bathroom features dual sinks, a large soaking tub that overlooks the grounds, and a large standing shower, perfect for relaxation. The property sits on 0.7 acres of land, with gardens to the front and rear of the house. The rolling lawns provide ample space for footballers to practice their skills. Despite building a home that they loved, the couple had claimed that they had no choice but to move because they needed more privacy. Jamie and Becky had claimed, the home gave many special memories for us, so it was a big decision to move on. We had some great times while living there. We planned our wedding from our kitchen. It's where the team came together on the night Leicester City made history. Sophia learned to walk there, and it was Finley's first home. It's a big part of history for us, but it's the right time to move to a home with more space for our family and where we can enjoy a sense of privacy. Shortly after selling their former home, Vardy had splashed out $2.5 million for a four-acre property mansion. This home was located in the countryside and is said to have just 80 residents nearby, giving Vardy and his family the privacy that they always wanted and deserve. The land is approximately 15,000 square feet and boasts eight bedrooms and five bathrooms, as well as five reception rooms. The home features all of the goodies, including plentiful dining and living room spaces, decked out with lavish furnishings, custom fittings, and fixtures, a cozy fireplace, and large flat screen television, perfect for binge watching live sporting events, and a wet bar, perfect for entertaining. I mean, this guy's got it all. In addition, the rooms featured oversized windows, giving the rooms tons of bright light and floor to ceiling glass doors, which provide access to the terrace. Vardy's Dig features a beautiful kitchen with all the essentials and boasts a breakfast nook and butler's pantry with more room than you know what to do with. The master bedroom features a sitting area, private balcony access, and a walk-in closet that could easily pose as an additional room in the house. The house comes with an abundance of luxe features, including an indoor swimming pool decked out with lounging chairs, perfect for training. The home features a state-of-the-art gymnasium that puts regular gyms to shame. The property also features a professional-sized tennis court and has additional space in the form of two annexes, one of which contains three bedrooms, three bathrooms, and a kitchen. In addition, the home features a sauna, jacuzzi, as well as stables and paddocks, plus a pretty dope backyard setup. The backyard features a gazebo, barbecue area, fire pit, and kitchen perfect for throwing an outdoor party. Despite already owning a massive home, Jamie and Rebecca Vardy have plans to build a two-story extension containing four bedrooms at their Lincolnshire mansion. According to planning documents submitted to South Keviston District Council, the extension would have five rooms with the total number of bedrooms in the home increasing to 12. I mean, can you believe that? If you're wondering where Lionel Messi and his family have been living as of late since last year, they're officially in Paris. Considering the star footballer is making his debut as Paris Saint Germain's new forward, he has been looking for a new mansion in France that will check off all his boxes. After leaving behind his $8 million custom Barcelona mansion behind, fans are itching to know where exactly Messi is currently living. And I'm here to fill you in on what we know. Lionel Messi, also known as Leo Messi, is a professional footballer or soccer player, if you will, who plays as a forward currently for the Paris Saint-Germain team. Hailing from Argentina, he's often considered the best player in the world or one of the greatest of all time. That that being said, it shouldn't come as a shock that Messi was the highest paid in the sport for five years and has amassed over $1 billion in career earnings. His estimated $600 million net worth has allowed him to live a life of luxury from taking private jets to award ceremonies or going for joy rides in his Maserati, all of which is a far cry away from the modest life that he grew up in. And
and messy, while his real estate also lives up to his expensive taste. Whether it's his upscale custom designed home in Spain, his jaw dropping vacation rentals, or his rumored new home in Paris, this athlete only wants the best of the best. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment today, checking out the properties of Lionel Messi. Don't, don't forget to like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and follow me on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. In summer 2021, with Messi playing for Paris, he had moved his family there with him, and at the time, all we knew was that they were looking for a new place to live. Leo and his family first settled in a five-star hotel, Le Royal Monceau, while they looked for the perfect home, where he was dishing out 23 k a month to rent. This exclusive hotel is located in the heart of Paris, just around the corner from the Arc de Triomphe. It opened in 1928 and boasts amazing views of the city, while the rooms were given a designer renovation by Philip Stark 11 years ago. The luxury hotel is known for its fine dining, boasting six trendy restaurants, and it also has an indoor pool, private cinema, and more. A source claimed that Messi had specific requirements for his potential Paris crib, as you might expect, saying they want the same as in Barcelona, a contemporary house with a very clean style without any work to do with an exterior and swimming pool. With his wife, three children, and a large dog, Messi and his family needed plenty of space in their potential home to be comfortable. There were a few mansions that were suggested to the soccer star to rent, one of which was located in the metropolitan area of Paris. It was close to the Eiffel Tower, and the neighborhood also had great international schools for the kids. The first mansion proposed stated that it had six roomy suites on one of the upper levels, including a ground floor with a fitness center, Turkish bath, relaxation room, swimming pool over looking the garden, service apartment with its own door, and more. This home cost a whopping $29 million. However, Leo was looking to rent in Paris, not purchase. Either way, that was only one of the options presented. Another mansion suggested to the Messi family was located in the same neighborhood, which was move-in ready and recently renovated. This place boasted luxury features like an elevator, guest house, staff apartment, indoor pool, sauna, and more. There were even perks like a wine cellar and a projection room elsewhere in the estate. More recently, in fall of 2021, it was reported that Leo finally settled on a rental house after weeks of house hunting, and it wasn't either of those two. With the rumored new abode, which we don't know much about yet, Messi did in fact have to compromise since it doesn't have an indoor pool. The new property, located in Nulli sur Seine, West Paris, had the Messi family sold, with his wife Antonella and father Jorge apparently falling in love with the place. Reportedly, the family's new crib has two floors spanning over 3,200 square feet of space. But we'll just have to wait to get more details. And now let's take a look at another one of Messi's rental cribs, this time a vacation home in Florida. In 2021, Leo, Antonella, and their three sons enjoyed a getaway in Key Biscayne, Florida at a rental property, which now you can book yourself, you know, if you have an extra $10,000 per night to spend. The modern Florida home sat right on the water, boasting five bedrooms and 5.5 baths throughout. It was boxy and white on the outside, while inside it was constructed in a true Florida style, featuring bright white walls and some wood accents. Not to mention, almost all of the rooms had floor-to-ceiling glass, looking out to the bay and the infinity pool. Many of the common rooms, like the kitchen, had walls of glass that disappeared for easy indoor-outdoor access, along with the sprawling dining room. Other features of the contemporary home included a wraparound deck to soak up the views, and plenty of patios to lounge at on the ground level. While Messi vacationed here, he shared photos and videos on social media of him and his family taking advantage of the pool and playing soccer out back. Before we wrap up this video, let's take a look at Messi's custom Barcelona dream home he's leaving behind during his move to Paris. Having spent most of his life living in Barcelona, it makes sense that his main residence was built here. The family property was located in the upscale Bellamar neighborhood in the coastal town of Castafels. 
The exclusive suburb of Bellamar is located about 25 kilometers southwest of Barcelona and has seen immense development and reevaluation ever since Messi decided to move in around 2009. The average home in Bellamar has a listing price of around $6 million, and the home that Messi purchased would realistically go for as much as $7 million if sold today. When Messi purchased this home back in 2009, he bought it for $2 million, but then he spent millions more to renovate and adapt his place to his liking. At just 12 miles away from the Camp Nou football stadium and with his former training center in close proximity, it's likely that his home's location had a lot to do with Messi's purchase. His home also boasted its own small soccer pitch, a swimming pool, an indoor gym, and playground for his three kids. In terms of the actual home itself, it features open terraces and expansive windows that overlook a mesmerizing view of the rolling Catalan hills, but as nice as Messi's home was, it's not without its controversies. For one thing, the entire home was situated in the middle of a no-fly zone, despite being located extremely close to an airport. Rumors abound that Messi had used his influence with the local government to ensure that was the case to protect his privacy, but others have pointed to his home being located in the middle of an area that houses endangered fauna and flora, which makes his home off-limits to most people. Professional footballer Cristiano Ronaldo has led one of the most enviable lifestyles in the entire world, and his home life is the object of curiosity for millions of fans all across the globe. Now that he's a former Manchester United star twice over, this undisputed superstar can spend his free time jetting around the world to any one of his incredible home. Life might have began for this legend out of a humble apartment in Portugal, but with a current net worth of around $500 million these days, it's since become the stuff that dreams are made of. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you wanna see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. After achieving his nearly impossible dream of turning himself into a professional footballer, Cristiano's real estate journey began in 2003 when he starred for Manchester United during his first run with the club. Like most of his teammates at the time, Ronaldo lived in the very exclusive neighborhood of Alderley Edge. There, he found a $3.6 million mansion to call home with five large bedrooms, his and her dressing rooms, a gigantic ensuite washroom, as well as sweeping gardens and charming terraces. With his diet and health being as instrumental to his success on the pitch as anything else, Ronaldo's kitchen also boasted all the necessary stuff, including brand new modern stainless steel appliances. Meanwhile, his dining room was the perfect place to invite his teammates over to throw a few friendly gatherings. With the added bonus of having an indoor swimming pool, a full service steam room, a jacuzzi, and a gym, as well as a home theater, there was almost no reason for Ronaldo to ever leave the comforts of home. Until he departed from Manchester United for the first time, that is. When Ronaldo left the iconic Premier League club, he'd hold onto this property for a further nine years before selling it in 2018, which just goes to show that this place must have held a pretty special place in his heart. Following his then record-breaking transfer to Real Madrid, Cristiano Ronaldo upgraded his digs substantially when he chose a stunning $5.9 million home in Madrid's La Finca neighborhood. Designed by renowned architect Joaquin Torres, this Spanish villa is so elegant that it even flaunts Ronaldo's initials on its front doors. The prominent entrance also shows off a peaceful Buddha idol sitting stoically on the ground, while wooden paneling highlights a stylish contrast against the dark tones of the door. Heading inside, you'll find elegant chandeliers, black and white family portraits, and a whole bunch of other bells and whistles. For the most part, the interior of this home utilizes a neutral tone alongside plush, light-colored carpets. The home's neutral color scheme continues on into Ronaldo's kids' nursery, where his youngest children would sleep side by side in pristine white cots. Meanwhile, the athlete's obvious love for dark-colored furniture is shown by with his black dining room 
bedroom table as well as a geometric centerpiece table in the middle of the living room. And that's without even pointing out all those black and blue couches spread throughout the home. According to the man himself, Cristiano's favorite spot in the house is his extremely comfy lounge, thanks to its large flat screen TV mounted on a nearby wall where he can catch up on all the football action he's not taking part in personally. Furthermore, the home is said to be equipped with a decent sized gym and an indoor jacuzzi where Cristiano spends most of what's left of his free time. Outside, an expansive garden occupies most of the space, while large wicker chairs, tables, and sun loungers allow this athletic stud to work on his tan. Better yet, there's an even an entire football pitch located right next to the outdoor pool to ensure Cristiano never falls behind on his training. After playing for Real Madrid for nearly nine years, Ronaldo went to play for Juventus in 2018. Now that he was in Italy as opposed to Spain, he needed a brand new home that was fit for a king and he found it in one of the most exclusive areas in all of Turin. Based upon reports, Ronaldo was immediately charmed upon laying eyes on this modern home that reminded him of his former estate in Madrid. The fact that it had approximately 10,700 square feet of space to play around with didn't hurt matters either. Connected to the main road by a lengthy private driveway that's heavily guarded by security, Cristiano's Italian home is surrounded on all sides by spectacular views, including scenic hillsides, a river, and a bird's eye view of the city. Composed out of two adjoining villas, this three-story abode has been designed with luxurious marble, while also boasting a number of picture frame windows spread throughout each room. We got a taste of the interior of this place during Cristiano's wife Georgina Rodriguez's latest Netflix series, I Am Georgina, which revealed that the home is so big, it sometimes takes her half an hour to get from the living room to the opposite side of the property. There is even a dedicated playroom in here for their children that's split into pink and blue for both girls and boys, alongside further touches like cloud accents and Spider-Man decals. Two of the home's other known amenities include an expansive walk-in closet that houses Georgina's many designer handbags and a garage that provides enough space to store many of Cristiano's incredible supercars. There's also said to be an indoor swimming pool, spa, and a gym jam-packed with top-of-the-line equipment. Last but not least, there's a sprawling yard and a private garden out back. Ronaldo didn't stick around touring for very long, however, and after returning to Manchester United, he and his family would allow others to rent this home through an Italian real estate brokerage. Now that we've checked out Ronaldo's primary home bases over the course of his career, let's quickly breeze through a few of his getaways before I tell you about his most recent high profile splash. Let's start with his holiday home in Costa del Sol, which he bought in 2019 for $1.7 million. Located on La Racina Golf and Country Club Estate, this four bedroom property sits in what's known as the Superstars cul de sac because of the number of famous residences who live nearby, including Ronaldo's friend and occasional training buddy Conor McGregor. Boasting high vaulted ceilings and incredible views of the Mediterranean Sea, not to mention clean lines, crisp white surfaces, and silver gray details, this home looks amazing. Its kitchen is said to include the highest of high tech, and there's also a private gym on the grounds, a built-in cinema, an infinity pool, as well as a driveway lit up with LED lights. As nice as that home is, when Ronaldo was looking to get a little closer to his roots, he decamps to a property in his hometown of Madeira. This incredible seven-story mansion took about four years of work to complete after Cristiano bought an abandoned warehouse and then turned it into this luxury abode. It's believed he spent somewhere around $8.6 million to buy the property and refurbish it with two Olympic-sized swimming pools, a jacuzzi, and a football pitch. Other details, like the number of bedrooms and baths, are unknown, but it is believed that Cristiano uses this spot as a holiday home whenever he's in town to visit his family. Family. He also hunkered down here for lockdown in 2020. Of course, Ronaldo doesn't spend all of his time in Europe. Sometimes he makes it stateside, and when he does, he used to crash in one of his most expensive properties of all. A stylish condo located in New York City's Trump Tower, which he purchased in 2015 for $18.5 million. That's where he owned a three-bedroom apartment designed by Juan Pablo Malino, who's famous for cultivating what's known as the maximalism style 
style. Boasting panoramic views of Manhattan and Central Park, as well as classy wooden furnishings and access to the building's many leisure facilities, this place had a little bit of everything that you might need. Unfortunately, the value of this property took a nosedive during the pandemic and the apartment eventually was sold in 2021 for less than $8 million or about $10 million less than what Ronaldo originally paid for it. But don't concern yourselves with Cristiano's pocketbook too much because as rumors began to circulate that he was on the outs with Manchester United, the football star bought himself a brand new mansion in Portugal. If the reports are to be believed following the World Cup, Cristiano Ronaldo and his family will be departing England once more and returning to Portugal where he began his career with Sporting Club de Portugal. Why do insiders tend to think that this will be his next big step? Probably because he bought the country's most expensive home ever in the Cascais region of Quinta da Marina. This three-floor mansion is located about 40 kilometers from Lisbon and has a reported indoor area of more than 29,000 square feet. Better yet, the south-facing home is said to offer mesmerizing views of the Atlantic Ocean, as well as its very own elevator and energy-saving solar panels. Of course, if all that's not impressive enough for you, the home is also said to boast a garage that's large enough to fit nearly two dozen vehicles. Fornalto apparently dropped around $11 million on the purchase of this home, but ever since then, he has been renovating it by spending another $10 million getting it redesigned by his friend, Paolo Brito. Brito has decorated all of Ronaldo's many homes, and over in this new location, he's already installed a one-of-a-kind Louis Vuitton mural. But when it comes to what Ronaldo's exact plans are with this home once everything's finished, the media seems split. Some assume he'll use it as an investment property, while others believe he'll move in only once he's fully retired. Or maybe, just maybe, those reports about his return to sporting CP will prove to be true and Cristiano Ronaldo will be calling this luxurious behemoth home sooner rather than later. At the 2022 FIFA World Cup, Kylian Mbappe, who currently plays for Team France, won the Golden Boot Award with eight goals and set the record for most goals scored in World Cup finals. The 24-year-old striker is also reportedly the highest paid footballer in the world, so you can already guess that the kid is living in luxury. It's said that the athlete owns a 6,400 square foot split level duplex in the most pricey area of Paris, France, with views of the Eiffel Tower no less. Before moving into his home, Killian lived at the famous Royal Monceau Hotel in Paris, a five-star establishment with high-class amenities near the Arc de Triomphe. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Born and bred in Paris, Kylian Mbappe has strong ties to the capital, but where he grew up might not be what you expected of him. Kylian was brought up in a tower block in the deprived Paris suburb of Bondi, where those who still live there are extremely proud of him and his success. Despite the football star now earning a reported 650,000 pounds a week and owning a multi-million dollar flat in the poshest area of Paris, Bondi residents still consider Mbappe one of their own. One of them is Elmire Florimond, a woman in her 60s who still lives in the apartment directly below Killian's former family home, where he lived until he was 10. She said that, you could hear thud 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 all the time because he was constantly kicking his football around his bedroom. And that bedroom was right above her son's room. She added, Killian's dad was a football trainer and he would follow him around everywhere. He loved football. Mrs. Florimond has lived in her flat overlooking A.S. Bondi's Leo Lagrange Stadium for almost 30 years, and Killian didn't forget about her. She also said, A few years ago, he sent tickets for my family to see a match at PSG and met with them and posed for photos after the match. Now you can find the star footballer's face on a 100-foot poster on a residential tower block nearby, with a slogan that means, in French, the town where anything is possible. 
While inspiring, it's a suburb where life is very hard. When Killian was six years old, he witnessed the infamous 2005 riots where upset youth attacked cars, police, and vandalized buildings while protesting against police harassment in this area. Bondi still remains deeply troubled. And while it's only a short distance from the center of Paris, it feels like a completely different world. The unemployment rate is double the national average, and it's part of the scene St. Denis 93rd arrondissement, which has earned a reputation for sky-high crime rates, including violence. Killian's dad, Willifred, was born in Cameroon, and in France, he was a respected football coach for AS Bondi, where Killian began playing at the age of five. Considering both of his parents had sports backgrounds, they encouraged him to work hard on his talent, which led to Killian being checked out by some of the world's top football clubs while still in school. Killian went on to win the 2018 World Cup with France and becoming the second team to score in a World Cup final while he was begged not to quiz Paris Saint-Germain for Real Madrid earlier this summer. That being said, Mbappe will continue living in his home of Paris, France. But his living situation, well, that has changed drastically since those early days. Being the highest paid footballer right now, Killian has the home to match his success. A luxury duplex flat at the top of a building in one of the most upper class residential areas of Paris, France, called Neuilly sur Seine. It's located in the 16th borough of the city and boasts an amazing view of the Eiffel Tower, which you can also spot from the unit's impressive rooftop terrace. While Mbappe is quite private about his home life, he does give glimpses of his space on social media from time to time, where he's lived for about four years. We can see the lavish flat has a sleek, curved, glass-railed staircase connecting the floors in Killian's home, which he posed on for Instagram in the past. The modern-looking abode also has plenty of windows and soaring ceilings, letting in a ton of natural light. His home is reportedly around 6,400 square feet of space and 12 bedrooms, as well as multiple baths. If the views of the Eiffel Tower aren't enough, you can also see the Champ de Mars and other highlights of Paris from Killian's flat. The flat has two outdoor spaces. One is a terrace overlooking the Eiffel Tower, and then the home's rooftop deck, which is seriously impressive. Not only can you see what feels like the entire French capital, there's also a bar up here, as well as a jacuzzi, making it a great space to entertain. Other features of Killian's home include a library, a gym, and a Turkish bath. Well, it's also said that he has a basketball court somewhere else on the property. Furthermore, his home is ideal located, only a few minutes from the stunning Parc des Princes. Reports suggest that the striker pays over $40,000 per month for the path, and his family lives there with him considering there's so much space. Allegedly, Mbappe also has a property in Paris worth nearly $10 million, and another family house in Monaco, but not much else is known about those places or if that's even true. When Killian needs to travel, he also does so in style as you might expect. He runs the modern corporate private jet, the Challenger 350, had reported 7K per hour to get around the globe. The player initially requested the private plane for 50 hours a year as part of his contract demands for PSG in 2018, but he didn't get it because he's probably paid enough money to cover trip expenses out of pocket. Killian's jet use is widely followed as well because trips to Liverpool at the beginning of the 2022 season sparked a lot of speculation about the player's possible transfer. Now, before we wrap up this house tour, let's see where the football star used to live. Prior to scooping up his luxurious duplex in Paris, Mbappe stayed at the famed five-star hotel, Royal Monceau in the heart of the city, close to the Arc de Triomphe. At the Royal Monceau, guests and long-term guests, which Killian would have been considered, had access to a wide range of upper-class amenities. There was a stunning spa, which was designed in a white temple style and spanned 1,500 square meters with a 23 meter swimming pool full of natural light at its center. The hotel is also full of contemporary art with an elegant bookstore, art gallery, and private art collection of over 300 works. There was also a private movie theater to enjoy and more than one gourmet restaurant on site. All of the rooms in the Royal Monceau were designed with a Parisian chic style in mind 
mind, and contemporary furnishings for the most part, blended with warm colors and details throughout. While living here, it's assumed that Killian lived in one of the suites, and there were multiple types of suites to choose from. One of the more common suites, for instance, sported one bedroom, one bathroom, and one living and dining area, as well as an office desk, walk-in closet, and handcrafted modern furniture. There was also features like unlimited access to the spa included, and a dedicated personal butler who's on call for you 24-7. Now, some of the larger suites, including what's called the prestige suite here, had all of those spaces plus more. I'm gonna guess that Mbappe stayed in one like this, because there was a kitchen area, a workspace, and home cinema, all in the comfort of your own unit. The interiors were modern, but also blended with a 40s and 50s French style. The room's description said, in this exceptional suite, you can live just like a Parisian while enjoying the luxury services of a prestigious French palace. Five units in this category are available at the hotel. Either way, we can see that Kylian Mbappe was living in luxury, and it's said that his team was funding his stay here. Since we've now checked out the star footballer's living situation in Paris, or what we know about it, as well as his former homes, the man considered by most to be the single greatest football player of all time, Pele, passed away on December 29th, 2022 after a lengthy battle with cancer. So I can't pronounce his birth name, but this was it. And he was born on October 23rd, 1940 in the country of Brazil and named by his parents after the American scientist Thomas Edison. It wouldn't take Pele long to separate himself from his peers and become the inspirational athlete we know him to be today. The first step in Pele's journey was to escape the sleepy town of his birth, Tres Corazoas, a name that translates to three hearts in Portuguese, and is located some 150 miles from Brazil's three major cities. Pele's humble village is surrounded by coffee plantations and is widely recognized for just one thing, producing the greatest star to ever play the world's most beautiful game of what was effectively a tiny hut-like house. Perched on the slope of a hill, Pele's original home would hold such a special place in his heart that well over a half century later, after leaving the village to join Santos FC as only a teenager, Pele would eventually reconstruct his childhood home based off of the memories of his mother, Celeste, who's still alive to this day a hundred years old. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Known as Casa Pele, this replica house was built using aging techniques that transported the interior and exterior of the space back to the year 1940. While there was no existing photos or descriptions of the original home, the furniture and objects lovingly placed throughout this version are all faithful to the time period. They were acquired through an exhaustive search of farms, thrift stores, and antique shops over the span of about three years. This means when you step foot inside this place, you'll immediately feel whisked back to the early 20th century, where a giant radio, a wood-burning stove, and low-voltage lamps were all very much a part of Pele's day-to-day -day childhood. Since opening its doors, Casa Pele has already gone on to receive over 15,000 visitors from 28 different countries all around the globe. And with his recent passing, you can expect that number to grow by leaps and bounds over the next few weeks. Of course, this replica of the home he grew up in isn't the only monument to the legacy Pele left behind. In Santos, the city where he rose to fame, you can visit the Pele Museum, an institution that was first opened in 2014, which consists of a remarkable collection of everything from photos to boots and kits he used during the course of his career. With more than curated 2,500 items, this multi-story 43,000 square foot facility has enough going on inside of it to keep a lifelong Pele fan entertained for hours. Of course, when you're as massive a star as Pele would become on the football pitch, celebrity isn't usually relegated to only the country where you're from. In Pele's case, his immense appeal would take him across the world to the United States where he would eventually buy himself a spectacular home. With as big of an international star as he was, Pele maintained a four-decade-long real estate connection to the Hamptons in New York State. Pele was originally lured to New York by the late businessman Steve Ross 
the former one-time chairman of Time Warner. Ross founded the New York Cosmos soccer team way back when in 1970, and five years later, he made a splash when he offered Pele a contract estimated to be worth around $4.5 million, bringing a huge amount of US attention to what was then a barely known pastime in North America. Besides being an ultra-rich football aficionado, Ross was also a frequent visitor to the Hamptons, who owned what was known as the sprawling Cody House compound. This was located in the neighborhood of Georgica. It's highly likely that Ross entertained Pele in his palatial estate and maybe even encouraged the athlete to buy his own place nearby. In 1979, the three-time World Cup winner dropped $156,000 for a waterfront hideaway in the Clearwater neighborhood of Springs on the northern shore of East Hampton. Today, that $156,000 would roughly translate to around $680,000. For nearly 40 years afterwards, the football star and his two daughters, both of whom live mainly in New York, would use this one acre spread as a summer retreat. At some point during that lengthy period of time, Pele expanded upon what's now a 3,400 square foot home by adding a second story and totally redesigning the kitchen as well. Today, the home boasts massive windows that make the absolute most of its incredible location and views, such as in the living room that features both hardwood floors and a double height ceiling to ensure for optimal relaxation in all that sunlight. Not far from there is the recently renovated chef's kitchen with marble countertops, a center island, and sliding doors that open out to the rear deck. As for the home's number of bedrooms, six in total, you can find those in the main floor and the upper level, alongside a total of seven and a half baths. There are two master suites located on the property, and they both have sliding doors that access a deck which runs the entire width of the house. Meanwhile, a finished lower floor includes a massive media and playroom with a wet bar, office, and lots of storage space to work with. As for the exterior, it includes a pool as well as an outdoor shower and a sauna alongside a detached two-car garage. For an added bonus, the property is FEMA rated X, which means that it's unlikely to flood, and it also boasts a deed beach along with marina rights. Following decades of ownership, Pele briefly rented this home at around $45,000 a month. But in 2018, he decided to sell the property for $2.85 million. At that point, Pele was already largely spending most of his time at home in Brazil, a remarkable looking estate, the details of which have never been made available to the public, but it is believed to be worth an estimated $4 million. It was here back in his home country where Pele would wind up spending the final years of his life. Pele had been undergoing treatment for his metastatic cancer since having a tumor on the right side of his colon removed in 20. 2021. In fact, throughout the entire pandemic, Pele largely remained out of the limelight, spending his 80th birthday isolated at home and skipping out on an event to unveil a life-size statue of him in Rio de Janeiro. Unfortunately, his illness got to the point where chemotherapy was no longer working. In November of 2022, Pele was admitted to the Albert Einstein Hospital with swelling and other cardiac issues. At the time, it was suggested that there was no emergency at hand, but unfortunately, that would prove not to be the case. On Christmas Eve, Pele's daughter Kelly would post a moving photo of herself holding her father in his hospital bed writing. We continue to be here in fight and in faith another night together. Only a handful of days later, Pele would pass away at the age of 82 due to multiple organ failure as a result of complications from colon cancer. It didn't take long for the tributes to come pouring in from some of the world's most notable footballers, including Neymar, Kylian Mbappe, Lionel Messi, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Not to mention other celebrities and world figures. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro would even declare a three-day period of national mourning with Pele's funeral being held at Santos Stadium in the very early stages of January 2023. Following the funeral ceremony, Pele was buried in Santos Memorial Necropoli Econominica, a 32-story high cemetery that Guinness World Records has dubbed the tallest in the world. Certainly a fitting spot to act as the final resting place for a legend as big as Pele. But no memorial, no matter how special, will ever be able to capture the magic that he created every time he stepped foot onto the pitch. Alright guys, coming in, this is where I live. Let's go. 
Although Cristiano Ronaldo is reportedly in quarantine right now, I'm not sure a seaside mega mansion with your family is the worst place to be isolated. For me, it's not, it's not a problem. You guys requested some videos on athletes, so I figured why not start with one of the richest. Cristiano apparently owns more than one dream house, including an $11 million flat in his native Portugal, a mansion in Marbella, and more. In this video, we'll be looking at the luxury places he likes to call home, as well as his car collection. Cristiano Ronaldo is a professional soccer player or footballer, if you'd rather call it, who hails from Portugal and currently plays forward for Juventus and captains the Portugal national team. Many consider him the best player in the world and one of the greatest players of all time. To be in my shoes is not easy, uh, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not complaining. I just. I just want to say that. I feel happy. At the time of this recording, he's 35 years old and he's been with model Georgina Rodriguez since 2016. Although the two had a daughter together in 2017, Cristiano already had three other children prior. Twins via surrogacy earlier that year, as well as a son born in 2010 whose mother's identity has been kept a mystery. How you see in the world, many kids don't have mom. So it will be like, uh, why it don't happen? Listen, some points in the life, it's private and people have to respect the privacy. Not only is Cristiano one of the most marketable and influential athletes in the world, he's also one of the world's highest paid, last year being number two worldwide according to Forbes. I mean, his current contract does pay him at least 138 mil every four years alone, so it makes sense. I don't think so. I think this is not gonna be the problem. Because if, if you will speak about the money, I will go to Qatar. Maybe probably they have more money than Manchester City, but. It's not about the money, it's about the passion. That being said, the man's estimated net worth is something like 460 mil. Hey guys, it's Karen. Today we're doing another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. We're going to be looking at the mega mansions Cristiano Ronaldo calls home with his family, even where he's living during his quarantine. And let me tell you, it's pretty fancy. If you like these videos, make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell to be notified when we post so you can always be up to date. We've also done house tours in the likes of Vanessa Bryan and Shakira and we'll have links to some at the end of this. Follow me on Instagram because I love connecting with you guys. I've also been reading all your comments and I'm going to be responding to some at the end. I need you to let me know who to do next in the comments down below and whose home you'd like to see. I know some of you have been suggesting athletes houses so let me know which. Now let's get into this video. If you didn't know, Cristiano and his family had to take themselves into isolation for a while like many others, especially since he was at risk through one of his teammates contracting the virus. Thankfully, Georgina has been sharing some photos on her Instagram of where the couple is quarantining themselves and I'm sure they have more than enough toilet paper to go with the mansion. We know that Cristiano and his family are staying in Funchal, Madeira, which is the capital city of the Madeira area in Portugal. It's backed by hills and known for its harbor, garden and famous wine cellars. He recently purchased a seven story house here right on the water and although we don't have all the details, it looks massive. It's reported that Cristiano and his family are staying on the top two floors of the home and that his brother Hugo and his his mom Dolores normally live on the lower floors. However, his mom is in the hospital at the moment because of a stroke. We can see Cristiano's home is white and bright with lots of windows and the villa also has an expansive rooftop pool. Not to mention you can see the Atlantic Ocean right when you look outside, as we can see from the photos they posted. We'll hope the whole isolation thing ends quickly, but if I were Cristiano, I'm not sure there's anywhere else I'd rather be anyways. Just last year in 2019, Cristiano actually bought what was the most expensive flat ever sold in the Portuguese capital city of Lisbon. This stunning apartment is located in the Lisbon area of Avenida de Liberdade, which is close to where Cristiano grew up as a child. Cristiano was in a bidding war to buy this luxury flat, but ended up getting it for $11 million US or somewhere around there. Although he's spending more time at his other home in Madeira, in the future it may serve as a home base when he's working. This flat is a sweeping penthouse apartment boasting 3,100 square feet of living space and three large bedrooms. It's designed in a modern luxe way and has an interior featuring marble, stone and wood. There's also all the latest appliances and electronics fitted inside the home. Other features include a spa, an indoor swimming pool, and of course, a full gym. Cristiano has gorgeous views of Lisbon's old city right from his bedroom, and the building is located right by the Eduardo VII Park. Cristiano's properties in Portugal are far from the only real estate he owns. Last year, he also decided to purchase a gorgeous vacation mansion in Marbella, Spain, which is a city and resort area on the southern coast. Here you'll find the Sierra Blanca Mountains, Mediterranean beaches, villas, hotels, and much more. 
Before joining Juventus in 2018, Cristiano spent nine years playing for Real Madrid and living in Spain, so we know he has some ties to the country too. His new high-tech villa is located on the exclusive community called The Heights, set on La Racina Golf and Country Club Estate. It cost Cristiano about 1.6 million US to purchase. This place has an open floor plan full of modern luxury and designed to be sleek. There's a kitchen and two dining areas, one inside and one out, and four bedrooms with walk-in closets. Throughout the home, there are ceiling to floor windows offering views of the Mediterranean as well as high ceilings and floating staircases. Cristiano will also have features such as home movie theater, wine cellar, private gym, and even an LED driveway, perfect for his luxury cars. Outside, there's a gorgeous garden area, sunken fire pit, outdoor lounge, and of course, a large infinity pool. Looks like the perfect getaway to me. Not only does Cristiano love his luxury homes, he's always been into cars too. Sorry. The cheapest one is a Mercedes-Benz C220, and on the other hand, the most expensive is a Bugatti Veyron he got for 1.7 million. Cristiano's car collection is full of sports cars, so it's clear he likes the fastest ones. He also has a Lamborghini Aventador with over 300k, a Bentley GT Speed, an Aston Martin DB9, an Audi R8, a Rolls-Royce Phantom, a Maserati, and three Ferraris. Not to mention sources say that there are somewhere around 9 more cars which include the likes of more Bentleys, Audis, Mercedes and a few Porsches. Last month, Georgina also gifted Cristiano a new Mercedes G-Wagon Brabus for his 35th birthday, which probably cost over 800k. If you're wondering how much all of Cristiano's cars cost, it's estimated at around 5 million in total. The numbers say everything, so this is I'm very comfortable. So now we've seen a few of Cristiano's properties in Europe, including what we know about the seven-story home he's staying in to wait out this virus with his family in Madeira. Although I think he lives there most of the time, he also owns an $11 million apartment in Lisbon, a vacation getaway in Marbella, Spain, and more. Aside from his current homes, Cristiano also opened his own soccer-themed hotel also in Madeira back in 2016. Here there are soccer-themed rooms, photos of Cristiano throughout the place, and it's close to the harbour. You can do a workout he created here at the open air gym, or if you'd rather relax, there's a rooftop infinity pool. Although he invested to make the place luxurious, standard rooms are quite affordable. Sometimes Cristiano even stays at his hotel himself. Sources say Cristiano also invested in an $18.5 million penthouse apartment in none other than New York City some years ago, but if he did, he doesn't spend too much time there. It's located in the Trump Tower on 5th Avenue in Manhattan, and it's definitely fancy. Lionel Messi is a professional soccer player, uh, I mean footballer, who plays for Barcelona. He's also a staple of the Argentinian national football team. An ingenious player, number 10 is currently widely considered to be the best footballer in the world and a viable contender for the greatest football of all time. That's right, he's the GOAT. With a resume like that, it's not surprising to find that Lionel earns roughly $92 million a year, and that's before taking into account all of his many, many endorsements, which bumps that number up with mansions in both Barcelona, Spain, and Rosario, Argentina. Among the 736 players that participated in the last World Cup in 2018, Lionel Messi is the highest paid person competing in the sport. This 32-year-old footballer is the forward of Spain's FC Barcelona and the captain of the Argentinian national team. Being one of the most prolific prolific athletes in the world has secured Messi a bank account with an estimated $400 million sitting inside of it, which means he can do things like take private jets to award ceremonies or go for joy rides in his Maserati, all of which is a far cry away from the modest life he grew up in. <laughs> Messi was raised in Argentina's third largest city of Rosario, the son of a steel factory worker and a cleaner. He excelled in soccer from an early age, but a hormone deficiency threatened to snuff out his legacy before he even had a chance to begin. At the age of 13, Messi traveled to Spain where he was signed to his first contract with FC Barcelona, who then paid for his treatments to battle the disease. After that, he steamrolled through the franchise's youth program on his way to debuting for the team's top squad in 2004 at the age of 17. Since then, Messi 
has won FIFA's Player of the Year award five times, led Barcelona to four Champion League titles, six Copas del Rey titles, and nine La Liga titles. With over 600 career goals, Messi is the highest scoring player in franchise history. He's also managed to match his success with the Argentinian national team, leading them to a gold medal at the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing. The only thing he's still in search of is that elusive first World Cup title. While he's working on that, in the meantime, he can spend his time living in his lavish mansion in Barcelona, where he has all the necessary fixings to make sure he keeps on top of his training. If he feels like spending some time back home in Rosario, he's got a home there too. But contrary to widespread rumors, Lionel Messi does not live in a house shaped like a soccer ball. Hey guys, it's Kara, and today we're taking a look at the homes of one of the world's most famous athletes, Lionel Messi, here for you on Famous Entertainment. I mean, I know next to nothing about soccer, but even I know who Lionel Messi is, and we'll see his mansions in both Spain and Argentina. Don't forget to like, hit subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified when we post so you never miss a vid. We've also done house tours and the likes of David and Victoria Beckham and Patrick Mahomes of the NFL, and we'll link to some at the end. Follow me on Instagram to chat and as usual let me know whose house tour is next in those comments down below. Now let's get into this video. Having spent most of his time at this point living in Barcelona, it makes a lot of sense for that city to be Messi's main base of operations. Messi lives there with his wife Antonella, his three kids and two dogs. The Messi property, sounds weird when you phrase it like that, I promise you it's not messy at all, is located in the upscale Bellamar neighborhood in the coastal town of Casa del Fels. This exclusive suburb of Bellamar is located about 25 kilometers southwest of Barcelona and has seen immense development and reevaluation ever since Messi decided to move in around 2009. The average home in Bellamar has a listing price of around $6 million, and the home that Messi purchased would realistically go for as much as $7 million if sold today. When Messi purchased his home back in 2009, he bought it for $2 million, but then spent millions more to renovate and adapt his abode to his liking. At just 19 kicks away from the Camp Nou football stadium, stadium, and with his training center in close proximity, it's likely that his home's location had a lot to do with Messi's purchase, being in close proximity to the type of facilities that make a footballer's daily routine all the easier. <laughs> In terms of the actual home itself, it features open terraces and expansive windows that overlook a mesmerizing view of the rolling Catalan hills and the blue waves of the Mediterranean Sea. The outdoor space includes a barbecue pit and dining area in addition to a massive garden that surrounds the entire property and a small playground for his three young children to have some fun with. Before we head inside, let's take a look at one last thing, the soccer pitch from which Messi practices his craft daily and tries to break his own personal records. Inside the home, a Mediterranean theme is present throughout. The decor consists of wooded floorboards, bright painted walls, and panoramic glass windows. Floral wallpaper and wall colors is abundant, while the general color scheme plays a lot with various shades of beige and brown, including chestnut toned floors and dark brown and light walnut furniture. This basic, uncomplicated decor gives the home a comfortable and modern overall feel. The mansion also houses a gym, spa, private theater, and a swimming pool, but as nice as Messi's home is, it's not without its controversies. For one thing, the entire home is situated in the middle of a no-fly zone, despite being located extremely close to an airport. Rumors abound that Messi had used his influence with the local government to ensure that was the case to protect his privacy, but others have pointed to his home being located in the middle of an area that houses endangered fauna and flora, which makes the home off limits to most people. According to his teammate Ivan Rakitic, in 2013, Messi's neighbors were making life difficult for him. They were renting out rooms in their house in the new 
tenants were noisy, rude, and often played music super loud, disturbing both Messi and his family. At first, Messi's solution was to build a wall between the two houses, but his neighbors threatened legal action. So what did he do? What do you think he did? He bought them out, of course ensuring his family's privacy. Considering that Messi spends almost all his time living in this house, I get it. I mean, if I had that type of money, I would probably do the same thing. As I mentioned before off the top, before moving to Barcelona at only 13, Messi grew up in Rosario, Argentina. In fact, I managed to find a picture of the house he grew up in. Considering we just got finished looking at the mansion he lives in now, that's a pretty great way to visually sum up just how far Messi has come in his life and what he's managed to accomplish with his singular talents. In contrast to his humble childhood home, once Messi started making some real bank, he purchased a mansion on the outskirts of Rosario so that he can return home as often as he likes and always have a place to go. Details of this house are a closely guarded secret. There isn't a single picture of it anywhere online that I could find. That might have something to do with several of his family members living there, and Messi probably likes to keep their lives as private as possible so that people don't harass them when he isn't around. The one detail I was able to discern about the mansion is that it is reportedly situated on the banks of the Piranha River. Alright, before we finish this video up, we've got one last home to look at. Only this next home is not Messi's actual place, it's just been linked to him a whole lot. Back in 2013, a rumor started circulating that Messi has hired an architect to create a new home for him, one shaped like an actual soccer ball. The home structure is football-like in shape, and the rest of the grounds is situated to resemble a soccer field in two halves of seen from above. From from a certain angle at the front, the design of the home also appears to make the shape of a number 10, Messi's playing number. The home was apparently designed by a man named Luis de Garrido, and he was basically shooting his own shot by creating these rumors that Messi was interested in his services. He even went so far to say that the home is located in Lavaneres, St. Andrew, and that Messi purchased it for 7 million pounds. But in reality, Messi did no such thing, and the home is just theoretical, never even of being built. I gotta admit I've been looking at clips and images of this home for a hot minute now and I can't tell if this place is a masterpiece in architecture design or an absolute travesty. I suppose it depends on how much you like soccer, but considering the greatest player in the world wants nothing to do with it, I suppose that means it's tackier than anything else. One of my favorite couples, David and Victoria Beckham, just recently celebrated their 21st wedding anniversary and took to Instagram to share some cute posts. Since the global quarantine, they've been staying at their vacation home in Cotswold with their kids. Posh and Bex just ooze glamour, don't they? And like you probably guessed, the properties they call home are no different. We'll take a look at their mansions in Beverly Hills, London, Miami, and more, and we even found some of the listings. David Beckham is an English former professional footballer or soccer player, however you want to call it, playing for multiple teams including Manchester United and the England national team. He retired in May 2013 after a 20 year career and many trophies. These days he's the co-owner of Salford City and Inter Miami CF, so maybe that's why the couple just picked up a giant futuristic Miami penthouse too. His other half, Victoria aka Posh Spice Beckham, rose to prominence in the 90s as a member of everyone's favorite girl group, including mine, the Spice Girls. Funnily enough, her man David said he first saw her in one of their music videos in a cat suit, and the rest was history. These days, she's an internationally recognized style icon and fashion designer. The Beckhams have definitely done well for themselves and truly show what a power couple should look like. They've built quite the empire while raising four beautiful kids at the same time. Considering David and Victoria have made a lot of money over the years combined, their net worth is at an estimated $900 million. They're almost in the billionaires club. Hey guys, it's Karen. Today we're doing another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. You guys requested this one and I was really looking forward to it, so we'll be looking at where David and Victoria Beckham call home. They split their time between London and Los Angeles it seems, so we'll be looking at all of those mansions. If you like these videos, make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell to be notified when we post so you can always be up to date. We've also done house tours and likes of Madonna and Gordon Ramsay and we'll link to some at the end. Follow me on Instagram to chat and just like usual, let me know whose house tour is next in those comments down below. Now let's get into this video. Back in 2018, the Beckhams unloaded their longtime Los Angeles residence on the down low for about $33 million. They bought it newly built back in 2007 for 18.2 mil through a trust linked to their London based accountants. Since the couple never marketed the home publicly, very little is known about what the family has done to the estate in over a decade of ownership. The mansion is tucked behind a row of other mansions facing San Ysidro Drive, which cut it off from the main road. 
Of course, it's in the upscale Beverly Hills area, just minutes from the Beverly Hills Hotel. First lined with hedges, then canopied by trees, a long private driveway passes through the secure gates leading up to the spacious motor court. Their previous home was a Tuscan-inspired Mediterranean villa. According to tax records, inside the home spans 11,497 square feet of space with 6 beds and 10 baths. The H-shaped mansion opens its north side to a quiet courtyard patio and on its sunnier south side to a broad terrace shaded by towering palm trees. Then there's a swimming pool we can see from aerial views surrounded by grassy lawns. Inside, the Beckham's previous LA mansion boasted exceptionally tall ceilings and rows of French doors opening onto the grounds. There were also fireplaces and hardwood floors throughout according to images of the home from 2007. Other features reported include an elevator, a spacious library, and a media slash music room. Although the couple sold their Beverly Hills mega mansion, word is they recently were renting one in the same hood. The futuristic hilltop estate is valued at around $37 million for purchase, so it's not surprising the Beckhams were paying $25k per month to rent this place. They may have since moved on from it, but they enjoyed most of last year here. According to the listing, this home sat on just under an acre of land in the coveted Beverly Hills and inside spent over 8,300 square feet with 6 beds and 10 baths. The modern mansion was built in 2014 and has glass walls, sweeping marble floors, monochrome furnishings, and an indoor-outdoor flow. There's also perfect views of downtown LA and the coastline from nearly every space in the home. There are two levels inside the home with black and white marble furnishings all over and features like a movie theater, home gym, and glass wine cellar. The decadent master suite Victoria and David share spans the entire upper level, offering a lounge, grand walk-in closet, private deck with spa, an attached bath with soaker tub, glass shower, and dual vanities. Outside, it's hard to miss the large infinity pool lined by palm trees, patio space, and outdoor fire pit. The family gave a glimpse into the home when they posted photos of their Halloween costumes on Instagram. Little Harper was dressed as Billie Eilish and posed by the infinity pool before joining her brothers for pictures inside. The pool area follows a white marble theme with black accents, and we can see a glass gate on one end to the pool. In another snap, David posted of Harper applying his Halloween makeup in the living area. We could see the dark paneled walls and white granite floors, keeping up with the theme of the mansion. Other amenities of the place include a zen garden, outdoor kitchen, smart home tech, putting green, and even a guest house. Although the Beckhams enjoyed this luxurious mansion in the hills, it isn't the only futuristic looking spot they're calling home. In recent news, around April of this year, it was reported that David and Victoria shelled out a whopping $20 million on a futuristic full-floor condo in one of Miami's most exclusive and eye-catching buildings. This 62-story condo tower known as 1000 Museum was designed by the late, famous architect Zaha Hadid and is prominent in the downtown Miami skyline. Since David is working to launch his Inter-Miami Soccer Club, the real estate purchase only makes sense. David and Victoria's mansion-sized unit is perched on one of the highest floors with 360 views of the city and ocean, spanning around 10,500 square feet of space with 5 beds and 6.5 baths. Although other details of their new condo weren't disclosed, looking at photos of the modern building, the residence is clearly lavish. Amenities in the luxury building include a sky lounge for dining and private events, rooftop helipad, a fitness center, an aquatic center with an indoor lap pool, and a spa. Of course, moving away from the US, Victoria and David's main home is an aristocratic mansion in West London's fancy Holland Park neighborhood. They reportedly bought this home in 2013 for about $40 million. They moved into the gorgeous townhouse a couple years after and spent an estimated $10 million more on refurbishing the place. They used celebrity designer Rose Uniaki to oversee the entire project. The Beckham's London family home has four floors and six bedrooms, plus many marble tile bathrooms throughout. There is an assortment of standout features inside, like a professional powder room, a gym, wine cellar, catwalk style runway, home movie theater, and even an indoor pool. It was designed with a monochromatic interior, which Victoria really loves. There are marble staircases, black and white tile floors, and grand bay windows. There's also minimalistic decor with lots of white and neutral cream tone couches and furniture, with some floral print wallpaper in certain rooms for a pop of color. Outside, the Beckham's property surprisingly contains two acres of an apple orchard in congested London, which is rare. David and Victoria put a lot of effort into the state-of-the-art kitchen, adding high-end appliances, including a coffee machine providing barista standard drinks, costing over 3 k Not to mention the charm of the entire space is full of beautiful flowers, along with statement pieces of art and furniture. There's also sleek black cupboards, strip lighting, and a flat-screen TV to keep them entertained while cooking. 
The Beckham's London residence offers both classic and modern features with iron railings, chandeliers, vintage mirrors, and other touches throughout. Other features of their gorgeous mansion include a spacious courtyard, a sprawling patio, and triple car garage. Finally, like I mentioned, Posh and Bex have been spending their self-isolation at their vacation property. Some years back, the couple shelled out just under $8 million for an E-shaped coveted barn compound near the tiny rural village of Great Two in the Cotswold area about two hours by car from central London. As the Beckhams loved to do, they quickly embarked on an extensive renovation and customization of the getaway mansion, including a huge treehouse structure on the property. Recently, the famous family shared glimpses into their home during quarantine and where they've been spending all their time, so let's take a look. From photos, we can see the cozy luxury home is full of exposed brick walls, log-burning fires, and more. Their family room, or one of them anyways, has two leather benches and an open fireplace, as well as a red tapestry rug over the wooden floors. Victoria shared a rare look into the country kitchen while she worked from home. There are bottle green cabinets, wooden worktops, and even a wood-burning pizza oven. A chandelier here adds a touch of glam. Another living room in the Cotswold home has more exposed bricks surrounding yet another fireplace, beam ceilings with spotlights and candles all around making the room extra cozy. One of the family bathrooms has wooden floors and wooden wall panels like much of the rest of the home. There's a black sink with white marble counters while the shower is white and black too. The Beckham's dining room has a long wooden dining table with striking chandelier as well as a fireplace at one end. Outside on the farm grounds, there are more features such as the plunge pool David and Victoria got for their garden, which their son Cruz showed off on Instagram. The couple has been focused on transforming the garden at the home too, with a vision to create a fairy tale garden complete with natural swimming pond and garden. The property also appears to have a tennis court and a grand outdoor seating area where the family can enjoy barbecues and dinners. Finally, David invested into another add-on for the home, a cabin that houses a sauna and steam room for ultimate relaxation. I'm scoring sickles, I got mad techers, and I've got over 100 million IG followers. Like, what else do I gotta do to be liked? It's ridiculous, man. You're so dumb. How could anyone not like you? According to Forbes, Neymar De Silva Santos Jr., or as he is more commonly known, Neymar Jr., is number four on the list of world's highest paid athletes in 2020. He's actually moved down one space from being number three last year after Roger Federer springboarded to the top of this year's list. Widely considered one of the best players in the world, Neymar has played for the likes of Santos, Barcelona, and Paris Saint-Germain, as well as playing for the Brazilian national team. In 2017, Neymar signed a five-year contract with Paris Saint-Germain that guaranteed him a base salary of around $50 million per year, but he also earns an additional $20 to $40 million a year in bonuses and endorsements, bringing his annual total up to something closer to 90 mil and his overall net worth to an astounding $185 million. Despite banking heaps of money for himself, Neymar has actually held off on purchasing a house outright to call his own, and has mainly gotten by with renting the nicest of possible homes in Paris as well as Beverly Hills before finally laying down roots in Rio de Janeiro after buying a mansion there a couple of years ago. Neymar Jr. was born in Brazil on February 5th, 1992. By the time he was only 11 years old, his family had already moved to Santos so that Neymar could join Santos FC when he was trained at their youth academy. By the time he was 14, he had traveled to Spain to join the Real Madrid youth team at a time when stars like Ronaldo and David Beckham were playing for the club. He made his professional debut at the age of 17 and within a handful of years he transformed himself into one of the most exceptional players to ever take the field, earning himself monster contracts in the process. Since transferring to Paris in 2017, there have been endless rumors that Neymar is actually looking to get back to Barcelona, the team he left for Paris. But with the recent season being suspended, the only place that Neymar Jr. has been spending a lot of time at lately is his Rio de Janeiro estate. This $10 million mansion really does seem to have it all, the least of which being its very own helipad. But that's not the only home I'm going to give you an inside look at today. I'm also going to bring you on a tour of a couple other places Neymar rented out over the years, including a historic home in Paris and a luxurious Airbnb in Beverly Hills. Hey guys, it's Kara, and today we're doing another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. We'll be looking at where Neymar Jr. calls home since I got some requests for this one. If you like these videos, make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell to be notified when we post so you can always be up to date. We've also done house tours and likes of Lewis Hamilton and Lionel Messi, and we'll link to some at the end. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and as usual, let me know whose house tour is next in those comments down below. And let's get into this video. To 
kick things off, we're gonna take a look at the five-story building that Neymar rented out for an astounding $17,000 per month after signing his massive contract with Paris back in 2017. This 10,800 square foot mansion is situated in the posh western part of Paris, 10 miles from the center of the city. This area has been home to a ton of celebrities over the years, including everyone's favorite French actor, Gerard Depardieu, as well as footballer Ronaldinho. The property sits on top of a hilltop and was originally the home of an architect, having been built in the 1950s. It has over 5,000 square meters of garden space situated around the property too. But the inside is a pretty well guarded secret. Reportedly, it features a giant indoor swimming pool located in the basement, complete with sun loungers and views that spill out onto the garden. In addition, there's also a sauna, a Turkish bath, and a massive game room where people can hang out and have fun, something that Neymar and his friends are always looking to do. I wanted to throw you all a surprise party, you know, to show how much I don't hate playing with y'all in France. We can't party. We have a match tomorrow. Okay, never stopped me before. Neymar didn't end up staying at this property for all that long, the reason being that he had a major problem with fans reportedly scaling his walls and making their way onto the property. After that happened a handful of times, Neymar eventually left and relocated to an undisclosed home somewhere else in Paris that hasn't been revealed to keep the same thing from happening again. Everyone on PSG is like so judgmental. I need to go somewhere where I can clear my head. Yeah, yeah we should go somewhere you can clear your head. Idea. Yeah, like a pizza. Next, we're gonna take a look at a vacation spot that Neymar has returned to time and time again. In fact, he's even been spotted hanging out with good friend Justin Bieber when he visited this spa. Every celebrity wants to spend time in Beverly Hills and Neymar Jr. is no different, renting out this million dollar mansion for over 9k a night, whenever he's in town. The residence is modeled after La Petite Trianon at Versailles in France. I promise you that the inside is just as beautiful as the outside when it comes to this equivalent to an American palace. The plush French chateau style villa boasts 7 bedrooms, 12 bathrooms, and can accommodate up to 14 guests at a time, with its own cinema, gigantic swimming pool, jacuzzi, and tennis courts in its 22,000 square feet of space, situated on 5.2 acres of land. But that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the type of amenities this place comes jam-packed with. Okay, fine. You guys want to see it? No problemo. It also features a library, wine cellar, gym, sauna, breakfast room, chef's kitchen, powder room, elevator, and a service staff consisting of a maid, a butler, and chauffeur. Of course, when you're spending your time off at a place as nice as that, you just know that your own personal home has got to keep up. And thankfully for Neymar Jr., his mansion in Brazil does exactly that. Check this one out. Finally, we've come to Neymar Jr.'s actual home, a mansion that he bought in 2016 for $10 million, about 60 miles down the coast from Rio de Janeiro. The two and a half acre plot of land rests in a gated community known locally as Portobello and in the middle of the Mangaratiba Resort, the same place where Sylvester Stallone shot some of the expendables. The interior of the home boasts a decor of fresh style and modern furniture with a simple cream and brown color theme to complement the five bedrooms and bathrooms located inside. The exterior of the property features a helipad and even its very own jetty spilling out onto the ocean. That's where Neymar docks his private yacht, a 115 foot monster worth a reported $8 million, or should I say that's where he used to dock it, before it was taken away by Brazilian authorities over some questionable tax decisions in 2018. But hey, I'm willing to bet he enjoyed it while he had it. Recently, Neymar has been staying at this property since shelter at home orders came down all over the world, and he's managed to keep himself busy with plenty of self-isolation essentials, like a home gym, tennis court, sauna, massage room, spa, and jacuzzi. And if that's not enough to keep him occupied, it also boasts an underground cellar with space for 3,000 bottles of wine, which I sure as hell know would do me for at least the next six months or however long all this craziness lasts for. And hey, if he's feeling bored, maybe he can extend his social circle by visiting his neighbors, footballer Emerson Sheik and Brazilian Emmy-nominated actress Adriana Estevez. It's kind of to give them a, a hope and a belief in them in themselves and no matter what society or the circumstances that you're, you're in at the moment, there's you know, there's always a, a pathway. Raheem Sterling, who is best known as a superstar soccer player for Manchester City and the English national team, has snagged some pretty luxurious real estate from England to Spain and even a home for Mama Bear. What a nice guy. In 2016, Nadine was handed a $2.5 million home and then a year later, Raheem forked out $3.1 million for a luxury pad in Cheshire, England. Weeks before, he and his partner Paige Milan gave birth to their son, Tiago. Previously, Raheem had owned a mansion in Birkdale and recently took it off the market after failing to sell. In addition, Raheem continued 
continues to spread his real estate portfolio a year later with his $5 million mansion home in Marbella, Spain. The lavish summer home 100 meters from the incredible beach between Puerto Banos and San Pedro. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a house tour you do not want to miss. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, so please do not show up at any private residences because it is not safe for anyone. Yeah, I've got um, dreams and uh, that I really want to fulfill and um, um, the the faith I've got, I'm, I'm looking to achieve those those dreams. At the age of 26, Raheem Sterling has already built quite the lucrative career, garnering a net worth of $45 million with a current salary of $18 million a season. Born in Jamaica, Sterling moved to London at the age of five and began his career at Queen's Park Rangers before signing for Liverpool in 2010. In July 2015, following a lengthy dispute over a new contract, he was signed by Manchester City in a transfer worth 49 million euros, the highest transfer fee ever paid for an English player at the time. You want to make sure you're at that, playing at the highest level playing at the best level. Liverpool was a great team. I've never um, said they wasn't. It was just at the time I thought it was a great opportunity to come here, work with some of the best players in the world. While making bank with salary, Sterling also crushes it with salary and endorsements. In 2012, Sterling signed a sponsorship deal with American sportswear and equipment supplier Nike. He appeared in an advertisement for the new Nike Green Speed 2 alongside various football stars. And in January 2013, he modeled the new Nike Mercurial Vapor 9. The money is well earned. He then went on to help Manchester City win back-to-back -back Premier League titles in the 2017-18 and 2018-19 seasons. In the 2018-19 season, he was named to the PFA Premier League Team of the Year and won the PFA Young Player of the Year Award and FWA Footballer of the Year. The young phenom has managed to build his real estate portfolio at quite a young age while handling over his mansion to his mother, he managed to pick up a nice little dig for himself. Five acre plot in the countryside in England. In addition, the beachfront property in Spain takes the cake and this was all picked before his 25th birthday. Man! Am I doing anything with my life? <laughs> hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Marlon Palmer, back with another house tour here for you guys on Famous Entertainment. I know it's 95% of you guys watching are not subscribed, so please be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post new videos daily. Now, we previously reported on the homes of David Beckham and Jaden Smith, so if you'd like to, please check those out. If you like these videos, ring that bell for notifications. Follow me on Instagram at thatdudemcfly and hit me up. Let me know whose house tour to do next in the comments down below. Let's get into the video. One of Raheem's first real estate purchases and probably the nicest story is the $2.5 million home he had picked for his mother Nadine. Even though Nadine got the mansion, she splits time between her estate and their much, much more modest home they previously owned, where Raheem used to help Nadine clean hotel toilets. Well, don't worry, none of them will ever have to scrub toilets again. Not many details are known about this place, but it is a two-story private gated residence and features a whopping 10 bedroom property. The home features an abundance of oversized windows that give the room bright life and an airy and roomy ambiance. In addition, to the front motor court, the backyard features a lavish pool and barbecue kitchen area in the backyard. Raheem Sterling started his real estate portfolio in Birkdale, England while playing for Liverpool. He eventually took his former home in Birkdale off the market even after moving to Manchester City after failing to find a buyer. The four bedroom property initially went on the market for one and a half million in August 2015, but the price was slashed to 1.2 million, which was 50,000 less than he paid in the March of the same year. The former property featured its own private cinema complete with red leather sofas and decked out with his Liverpool shirts. The mansion also featured his very own room dedicated to Michael Jackson memorabilia. Now that is a man. Weeks before he and partner Paige Milan gave birth to new baby son Tiago, Raheem Sterling had moved into a stunning new $3.1 million mansion that is located on a five acre plot on the countryside. The lavish abode features five bedrooms plus an additional guest flat built over the top of the three garages and has a floor plan of 7,500 square feet. Less than an hour from city's training ground, the new house comes complete with its own wildlife pond and a paddock surrounded by farmland to offer the utmost relaxation and tranquility. The home features an open concept, spacious rooms, large floor to ceiling windows, and glass sliding doors to both rooms and an outdoor terrace. The kitchen living space features all the modern stainless appliances, marble countertops, and an island perfectly centered in the room. In addition, the custom kitchen is steps away from the outdoor terrace and a bar for those that fancy a Chardonnay, of course. The master suite and guest den both offer skylight windows, balcony access, and ample space with access to bathrooms. The bathrooms feature elegant tiling, marble countertops, a large soaking tub with breathtaking views, and an oversized stand and shower. Probably the most glamorous of Raheem Sterling's real estate portfolio is his $5 million summer vacation home in 
in Marbella, Spain. Boasting a contemporary style, the home features a stunning yard with massive custom-made pool lounging area and outdoor bar. In addition, the home is 100 meters from the incredible beach between Puerto Banos and San Pedro. The villa is brought alive by the soft tones of white encountered all over and an open floor plan helps the dining space and cooking area mesh well together. The home features custom-made furniture that was created exclusively for the property, offering a unique modern look designed to blend perfectly into interior and exterior spaces. Floor to ceiling sliding glass windows give access to the garden and outdoor terrace. The kitchen features all of the modern stainless appliances, beautiful marble countertops, and an island perfectly centered in the room. In addition, the home is decked out with an abundance of oversized windows, large cozy furnishings, and unique artwork and paintings in basically every room. The master suite is well utilized with an abundance of space, oversized walk-in closets, big enough to be an additional room in the house, and access to the elegant bathroom with cozy soaking tub and massive stand and shower. While the interior is pretty dope, the outdoor of the home features manicured grounds, rolling lawns, and that custom made zero edge swimming pool area, making it quite possibly the most glamorous spot in the house. We're willing to guess he's thrown a few team parties here. Besides the incredible pool area, the villa vibes with style inside and outside, with two large sun terraces looking over the pool and garden on the first floor, and boasts terrific ocean views. According to the list of the home, in addition, the ground floor has a double bedroom with ensuite bathroom, leading out to a private terrace garden area. The basement level, benefiting from independent access and floor to ceiling natural light, is in excess of 400 square feet. That's impressive. All right, so I think I'll bring this house tour to an end here. We got to take a quick look at Raheem Sterling's homes and his two new spots in England and Spain, respectively. After seeing those houses he snagged, what did you guys think? Was it everything you would expect out of Sterling? Personally, I'm torn between the countryside home with the pond and the villa with the outdoor entertainment area. Are you not entertained? Out of Sterling's features, which ones were your fave? You guys can go ahead and rate them in the comments down below. I'd also love it if you guys follow me on Instagram at thatdumcfly so we can chat some more. And hit us up in the comments down below to let us know whose house tour to do next. See you guys next time. Bye.